All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called the plague of gangsterism. The plague of gangsterism. So let's open up with the book of Leviticus 26, verse 14. Let's start there. Leviticus 26, verse 14. Okay. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 14. Come on. But if ye will not hearken unto me, mm -hmm. and will not do all these commandments. So now the, the Lord is using Moses to teach us the do's and don'ts of the law. If we don't do the law, there's certain ju there's judgments that will come upon us, which we're about to read. So the Moses is giving us warning here through Moses. Go ahead. And if ye shall despise my statutes, mm -hmm. or if your soul abhor my judgments, Come on. So that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. But that ye break my covenant. Because remember, the covenant is the commandments. So the Lord is giving us warning and say, listen, if you will not do these commandments, you don't keep these, these judgments, you understand, you despise my statutes. Here's what the Lord says he will do. Go ahead. I also will do this unto you. Mm-hmm. I will even appoint, appoint over you terror. He says he will do what? Consumption. I will even appoint over you terror. The Lord says, because if we don't do what we just read in verse 14 and 15, he says he will appoint unto us terror. You understand? Keep reading. Go ahead. Consumption. Mm -hmm. And the burning egg that shall that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall so sow your seed again. in vain. Okay, read that verse again. Read verse 16 again, one, one more time. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 16. Come on. I also will do this unto you. Mm -hmm. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes Mm -hmm. and cause sorrow of heart. Okay, come on. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. So now the Lord, I need you to put some power in your reach. It says, I will even appoint over you terror. Meaning what? The, there's going to be terrorism in our communities. That's what the Lord is saying. Because of what? Because of us rejecting his commandments. Because these commandments were going to teach us what? Right from wrong how to raise our kids to prevent terrorism from our own sons and daughters. You understand? So the Lord said, because you're rejecting this, this is what will befall you in these last days. Okay? It says consumption. You are going to be consumed by terrorism and the burning egg, meaning diseases, the plagues. Okay? That shall consume the eyes. Okay? And cause sorrow of a heart, meaning stress. You understand? You're not going to believe what you're seeing. You understand? And he shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Because guess what? The Lord is going to use our own people also. Not just the, the other nations, but our own people, they will do this to us. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. Within our communities, there's going to be terrorism. There's going to be consumption. There's going to be diseases and plagues and sorrow of heart. Because of what? Because of breaking God's laws. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 32, 16. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 16. Let's read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 16. Come on. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Mm -hmm. With abominations provoked they him to anger. So now guess what we did? In the, because we were in the land at this point. And guess what? When we, we, when we, were, we were eating fat, everything was good. Guess what? We forsook the Mosai. We started to worship idols. We went into idolatry. Go ahead. They sacrifice unto, unto devils, not to God. Come on. To gods whom they knew not. Mm -hmm. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Okay, you see that? It says we sacrifice unto devils, not to God. So guess what we did? We, we worship idols. We sacrifice unto these idols. You understand? We burn incense unto them. 
we're doing a lot of evil to provoke the Lord to anger. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse 19. Okay, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. You see what he's saying? When the Lord saw it, what is the it? He saw us worshiping strange God, new gods that came newly up, whom our fathers feared not. So now the, the Lord says, when he saw this, he hated us. You understand? He hated us because we what? We rejected his laws. He says, because of the provoking of his sons, and of his daughters. Okay, read on. Verse 20. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And he said, I will hide my face from them. Come on. I will see what their end shall be. Mm -hmm. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. You see that? The Lord says, because we did this, he says he will hide his face from us. And the Lord, he definitely did hide his face from us. Watch this. Give me the book of Micah, okay? Give me Micah 3. Give me the book of Micah real quick. I'm going to show you something here. The Lord says he will hide his face from us. And indeed, he did hide his face from us. Get that in Micah chapter 3 and verse 4. Read that. The book of Micah chapter 3 verse 4. Read then shall they cry unto the Lord, mm -hmm. but he will not hear them. Come on. He will even hide his face from them at that time. As they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. You see what the Lord says? So he's using Micah to prophesy against us. You understand? Because Micah walked during the time of the kings. So he's saying, listen, um, I'm going to hide my face from you. Okay as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. So guess what the Lord did? The Lord, he, he, he hid his face from us. Meaning what? The understanding of this Bible was lost because we forgot who we are. Because the moment we lost the understanding of what this Bible says, we lost who we are. We lost our identity. We lost our culture because the Lord was mad with us. Give me Psalms 104 verse 29. Psalms 104 verse 29. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 29. Read. Thou hidest thy face. What did he do? Thou hidest thy face. So David is speaking in the spirit here. says, thou hidest thy face. Meaning the Lord hid his face from us. Read. They are troubled. We found ourselves in captivity. You understand? In oppression, troubled, afflictions. Read. Thou takest away their breath. Mm -hmm. They die. Come on. And return to their dust. You see what happened to us? The Lord, when the Lord hid his face from us, he took away our breath. What is the breath? He, he took away the spirit that he gave unto us. The breath of the power of God. He took this wisdom from us. You understand? He says they die. We died spiritually. We died physically in slavery. You understand? We experienced apartheid colonization, forced migration, slave trade, you understand, by the Chinese, the Arabs, you understand, the French, the Dutch, the British, the Portuguese, they all put us in slavery, the Boers, the Dutch, okay, all the nations benefited from us rejecting this Bible, and they put us in slavery, and now our necks, you understand, is under their foot, because of what? Because of rebellion, okay, watch this, now let's go back, to 32, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 20. Read that again. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 20. Read. And he said, I will hide my face from them. Mm -hmm. I will see what their end shall be. Come on. For they are a forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. Because we don't have faith. That's what the Lord is saying. Because we lost faith in the Lord. We, try, we put our trust and our faith in idols. You understand? We went into idolatry. We put our trust in that. We forgot what the Lord did for us. Jump up to verse 18. I'm going to show you what we did. We forgot. So it says, the most High God, the reason why he says we have no faith is because in verse 16 and 17, 19 and 20, 
we forgot. We went into idolatry. So we forgot what the Lord did for us. Now read verse 18. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 18. Right. Of the rock that beget thee, thou art mm -hmm. unmindful. Come on. And has forgotten God that formed thee. That's what we did. The rock that beget us, that's Jesus the Christ. We forgot. We were no, no, we were no longer mindful of the rock that beget us. You understand? We forgot the most that God that formed us. So we became what? We became spoiled. You understand? We became ungrateful. We no longer had the spirit of joy. You understand? In God's commandments and what he did for us and in pleasing him. We started to lose what? Faith. We started to lose zeal in pleasing the Lord. We went after our own lusts. Jump down to verse 22. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 22. Right. For a fire is kindled in mine anger mm -hmm. and shall, shall burn unto the lowest hell right. and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. So now the Lord is saying because of what we did, the Lord's his anger was kindled against us. You understand? It was kindled against us so much so that the the northern kingdom and southern kingdom, we all went into slavery. It happened back then. It happened today in these last days. That's why today we are in South Africa. That's why today we are in Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Ghana, Guinea. You understand? Cape Verde. You understand? The Congo. Why? Namibia. Because of breaking God's commandments. The Americas, North, Central, North, Central and South. Egypt. We are in India. We are in China. We are in Japan. So on and so forth. Because of breaking God's laws. Okay, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 23. Right. I will heap mischiefs upon them. Uh huh. Come on. I will, I will spend mine arrows upon them. You see what God is saying? He says, I will heap mischief upon them. The Lord says, I'm going to bring evil upon you. That's what he's saying right there. I will heap mischief upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Meaning what? Sword. Death, destruction, famine. You understand? He's going to send the nations against us. That's why he says, sword. He will use these nations to punish us because of our sins. Come on. They shall be burnt with hunger. Stop right there. They shall be what? They shall be burnt with hunger. So that goes into what? That goes into famine. He says, we're going to be burnt with hunger. There's going to be lack of food. Like when the corona hit, in, 20, in 2020, guess what? There was lack of bread, lack of food. People lost their jobs. That's what the Lord is saying right there. He says, I will what? He says, they shall be burned with hunger, famine. Okay, go ahead. And devoured with burning heat. When we're devoured with burning heat, come on, that goes into diseases and so forth. Right? And with bitter destruction. Because that was a bitter destruction. The thing that we experienced in 2020, you understand? That was a bitter distraction. Going back all, all also all going back to what? Going back to the transatlantic, the sub-Sahara, you understand the Silk Road, the apartheid. Guess what? That was bitter distraction. Okay, because it affected all the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them mm -hmm. with the poison of serpents of the dust. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I will send the teeth of beasts upon them. What is he talking about? The teeth of beasts, when you examine during the time of apartheid in Duduza, in, in, in Soweto, you see what they were doing? They were setting dogs on us. That's what the Lord is saying right there. When he says, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. They were setting dogs on us. The Buddhists, they were doing that. You understand? So that's because of what? That's God's judgment. Okay? He says, with the poison of serpents of the dust, because he will use the, the Buddhists, the Dutch, the Germans, okay, against us. That's what the Lord, that's what Moses is teaching us right there. But we didn't believe what Moses said. Keep reading. Verse 25, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 25. Pray. The sword without. Mm -hmm. The terror within. And terror within. The sword without, meaning... The sword that's going to come from outside. You see what the Lord is saying? And the terror and terror within. 
meaning there's going to be terrorism in, within our communities, within our houses. They were going to be terrified and terrorized by young black men with guns, young black men with knives at the street corners, you understand, sagging their pants, smoking weed, smoking hubbly, you understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. This pandemic or this plague of gangsterism is happening everywhere. You understand? In Westbury, it's happening over there. It's happening in El Dorado. It's happening over there. Mamilodi, it's happening over there. Cape Town, it's all over the place. You understand? Young black men terrorizing communities, fathers and mothers. They're even terrorizing kids going to and fro to school. That's what you are seeing right now in the news. You understand? Why? Because we are full of the, they are full of the fury of the Lord. This is God's judgment because we rejected his commandments. Read again. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 25. Come on. The sword without mm -hmm. and terror within. Read. Shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. You see that? So this terrorism, this gangsterism is going to destroy both the young man meaning children, and young men, meaning teenagers, because they are the ones that are mainly involved in this gangsterism business. You understand? And these older ones in gangs, they recruit the young ones. That's why they go to the schools to recruit. You understand? Ray, come on. The suckling also with the men of gray hairs. You see that? The suckling also, meaning what? The infants. You see kids as three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, they are getting shot by these monsters with guns and knives at the seat corners, terrorizing all communities. You understand? We see it on the news. It's going on right now. Okay? Because they, I'm going to show you in the news what's going on. These gangs, there's a pandemic of gangsterism in our communities. And the government is not doing nothing about it. The churches are not doing nothing about it because they are not teaching them God's laws. You understand? So now watch this. Jump down to verse 28. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For they are a nation void of counsel. Come on. Neither is there any understanding in them. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, because of all of these evils that we're doing, that's why the Lord is saying, because they are a nation void of counsel. Because are we naturally void of counsel? No. Because the Most High God gave us this book. He gave the Bible to the 12 tribes of Israel. So because we are rebellious, we think we know better. We rejected God's laws. We started worshiping idols. We joined political parties. We, we worship pastors and so forth. You understand? Celebrities and soccer players. I guess that's what our people are doing today. That's why they be following all these men and women in the media, particularly celebrities, football players and so forth. But guess what? Those people don't have no sense. Their sense is in this book. You understand? That's why now as a people, we are void of counsel. The Lord is saying. Read that again. Verse 28. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 28. Come on. For they are a nation void of counsel. Mm -hmm. Neither is there any understanding in them. There is no understanding in the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Oh, that they, they were wise. Mm -hmm. That they understood this. That they would consider their letter end. You see what he's saying? He says, I wish that they were wise. He says, oh, that they were wise. That they understood this. What is the this that we needed to understand? The judgments for breaking God's commandments. But we didn't get it. When Moses was teaching us, we didn't believe none of them. You understand? We did not believe it. That's why it says we have nation void of what? In whom there is no faith in verse 20. So here the Lord is saying, I wish they understood this, that they would consider their letter end, meaning what would befall us in the last days. And guess what? That's exactly how it happened. We still don't believe. We still didn't get our minds right. You understand? So the Lord is telling us that because of breaking God's commandment, there's going to be idolatry in the land. You understand? There's going to be uh, wickedness in the land there's going to be terrorism in the land in the community wherever we are scattered there's going to be terrorism we will experience it from our own young 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 sons and daughters too 
because you hear cases where daughters are killing their mothers. That's the evils that you're hearing right now. You understand? Now watch this. Now jump up to verse 19. Read 19 and 25 together. Deuteronomy 32 verse 19. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 19. Come on. And when the Lord saw it, mm -hmm. he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Jump down to verse 25 now. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 25. The sword without mm -hmm. and terror within shall destroy both the young men and the virgin. The suckling also with the men of gray hair. You see what he's saying? So because of the provoking of his sons and his daughters, guess who's going to be affected? The young men will be affected by this. The virgins, meaning young women of marriageable age, because they are getting raped. Our young daughters that are joining these gangs, that's how they initiate them also. He says the suckling also, meaning the little kids that are going to school, they are terrified now because of these gangsters. You understand? These, these, young, these young black men with guns. These are our people. They are full of the fury of the Lord. Why? Because God's laws are not being taught in the houses because they raise them up. They raise the kids, the children with television. They buy them tablets. They buy them Xboxes. These Xboxes come with violent games. Who call of duty? You understand? Those type of games, you'll be shooting all over the place. When you go out, you, you, are, you are itching for a gun. It's all psychological. You understand? That's what the Lord said. This is what would happen to us. That's what happening in our communities right now. You understand? So that's why now we are waking up to do what? To go to the our communities and teach them God's laws. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 20 verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 4. Come on. For thus says the Lord, Behold, mm -hmm. I will make thee a terror to thyself. You see what God is saying? He says, I will make thee a terror to thyself. Meaning what? You are going to be an enemy of your own. You're going to be your own worst enemy. The Lord says, I want to make you to become your own worst enemy. And guess what? Because you're your own worst enemy, you are setting the example as your own worst enemy. Your children are watching. Guess what? The children are going to be an enemy to their own self and to the brothers and sisters that look like them. You see how this goes? The Lord says, I'm going to do that thing. Because you don't want to listen, I'm going to do this thing to you. Read it again. Okay. Verse 4 again. The book, of, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 4. Read. For thus says the Lord, Behold, mm -hmm. I will make thee a terror to thyself. Come on. And to all thy friends. And to all thy friends. Because remember, um, we started to Nebuchadnezzar, because Jeremiah was prophesying that um, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come and overthrow Judah. We didn't believe it. You understand? The kings that during the time when Jeremiah was prophesying, they did not believe anything that Jeremiah was saying until it was too late. You understand? So, but now he says, and to all thy friends, because we started to make friendships with who? We started to make friendships with the other nations. You understand? To go against the prophecies of the prophets. I'm going to give an example. Give me the book of Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. Great. Woe to the rebellious children. Mm -hmm. Says the Lord. Come on. Take counsel but not of me. Great. And that cover with a covering but not of mine spirit that they may add sin to sin. You see what we was doing? It says we were covered with the covering, but it wasn't the covering of the spirit of the Lord. We were covered with something else, sin, evil, and we were seeking protection outside of what God's counsel. We didn't listen to the prophets. You understand? That's what is going on here. Next verse, watch this. Because during the time of Isaiah, during the time of Isaiah, he was prophesying also during, he prophesied during the time of the kings. You understand? Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 2. Read. That walk to go down into Egypt mm -hmm. and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. You see that? Come okay. on. 
and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. You see that thing? So instead, we put our trust in Egypt back then. We put our trust in Egypt. That's what our forefathers did. You understand? They didn't listen to what Isaiah was saying. They didn't listen to what, um, what Jeremiah, our forefather, was saying. He was prophesying. They didn't listen to them. But we trusted in Egypt. Now he says, and, and to trust in the share of Egypt. Today, who's the share of Egypt? America, the West, Europe, you understand? Russia, that's the share of Egypt. Okay, now jump down to verse 7. Watch this. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 7. Read. For the Egyptians shall help in vain. You see what the Lord was telling us? He was using Isaiah to tell us, listen, the Egyptians are going to help you in vain. You understand? Because they have no business really helping you because of what? Because, I mean, the nations know our history. So you really think they really want to help us? No. Okay, they're going to help in vain. Right. And to no purpose. Mm -hmm. Therefore, have I cried concerning this. Right. Their strength is to sit still. Our strength is to sit still. What does that mean? Our strength is to sit down and apply this book. That's our strength. The pray to the Father the more that the most I deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. You understand? Give me Isaiah 31 verse 1. Because the prophets constantly, they told us, listen, don't trust in oppression. Because guess what? You know what? Before you get to chapter 31, read verse 12. Okay? Because I'm going to show, read verse 12. But I'm going to show you because the Lord, read what, what we're reading here in Jeremiah 20 verse 4. When he says to all thy friends, because we thought those are our friends. Against what? Against the judgment that will come upon us if we don't get our minds. But we didn't believe the prophets. Now that's why you see so much gangsterism and terrorism in the nation of Israel, in the black community. Okay? Now read verse 12. Watch this. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 12. Read. Wherefore, first says the Holy One of Israel, Mm -hmm. because he despised this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay there on. You see what was this problem? The Lord is telling us as we trust in oppression. What was the oppression? Because we asked Egypt for help. We forgot that, guess what? The Lord delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the house of bondage. Now we still going back to our slave masters that held us captive for 400 years. Now he's saying, you trust in oppression and perverseness. Because that's what we did. You understand? That's what says in, against uh, and all thy friends. Because we thought they were our friends. Chapter 31 verse 1. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 31 verse 1. Pray. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. You see that? Destruction unto them that go down to Egypt for help. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? He says, this death thing will befall you. You go down to Egypt for help. I'm going to destroy you for that thing. Go ahead. And stay on horses. Mm -hmm. And trust in chariots. Right. Because they are many. Mm. And in horsemen. Because they are very strong. But they look, they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. Neither seek the Lord. You see, what, you see what the Lord is saying? Because we were, we were looking at the military artillery of the other nations. You understand? We say, surely they're going to deliver us. The Lord says, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. Neither seek the Lord. Neither what? He says, neither seek the Lord. We for God, that's why it says, thou of the rock that beget, they beget thee, thou art unmindful. And that's what we did. So it is today. You notice what's going on in, the, in, in South Africa now? There's a lot of xenophobia going on. There's a lot of toy toys going on. You understand? There's a lot of gangsterism going on. Nobody's actually saying, let's open this book to actually figure out what the hell is going on. Nobody's doing that. So we're trusting in oppression. Because toy toy is oppression. You understand? Oppressing your own brother from the Congo, from Zimbabwe, that's oppression. That's dumb as hell. Because those are your own people. The same oppression that they experienced from the British when they conquered Zimbabwe is the same oppression that we are experiencing this day when the Boers, the Dutch, you understand, the Germans conquered us, the British. 
They took everything of ours. They put us in the ghettos. They created Bantu stands and gave us Bantu education. We forgot all of that. That what our brothers and sisters in Zim experienced, and this is the same thing that we experienced by the same nation. But as a people, we forgot that. That's why there's so much gangsterism in the black community. Terrorism. You understand? From all levels, the older ones, the young ones, the children, the maids, everybody is, is being touched by this thing because we rejected God's laws. So go back to Jeremiah 20 verse 4. Okay, come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 20 verse 4. Read. Right. For thus says the Lord, Behold, mm -hmm. I will make thee a terror to thyself and to all thy friends. Okay, come on. And they shall fall by the sword of their enemies. Mm. And thine house shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. And he shall carry them captive into Babylon. And shall slay them with the sword. You see that? So Jeremiah's prophecy, listen. All these gymnastics that you are doing, you don't want to repent. You don't want to keep your, you don't want to get your mind right. Obey God's laws. Keep God's commandments. It says, listen, the, all, these, the, all these rebellion that you're doing, you listen, I'm still going to send Nebuchadnezzar after you. He's going to take you into captivity. You and Northern Kingdom, because they had to conquer the Assyrians and put all 12 under Nebuchadnezzar. And that's exactly what they did. So it is today the same thing. The Portuguese, the Spaniards, Christopher Columbus and them, the Chinese, the Arabs, they all put us in slavery. They were all working together to put the black men and the black women in captivity. So now, because of all these things that have happened to us, we have forgotten who the enemy is. You think your enemy is your own brother now. That's why you see all these foolishness going on in the country. You understand? You see young men, they dress like soldiers. They have no idea what's going on. They forgot who the enemy is. The real enemy is just sitting there, just watching the whole thing. Who's there? The white man? You understand? The Arab men, the Chinese men, because they all work together to oppress us. So as a people, the black man has forgot who the enemy is. The black woman has forgot who the enemy is. The enemy is the people that put us in slavery. They colonized us. They put us under a heavy system of apartheid, which is still going on today. Economically, you understand? Where we stay, what we eat, the food we eat, the schools that we go to, you understand? The shops we buy from, they are oppressing us on all levels. The black man is blind. You don't see what's going on. Now you fight against your brother that look like you, that is, that is going through and went through the same oppression that you are going through. We have forgotten that thing. It's time to return back to this book to see who the enemy is. The Bible is the only book that can show us that. Now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 21 verse 18. Because of this gangsterism, the Lord said, I'm going to use your sons and daughters to oppress you. You understand? Here's an example. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. Read what you got. The book, of, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 18. Come on. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, mm -hmm. which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that, when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. You see what he's saying? Now, this goes into what? A stubborn and rebellious son. This stubborn and rebellious son, it says, he which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother. So this rebellious and stubborn son, what law is he breaking? Get that in Exodus 20. This is the law that he's breaking. You understand? Exodus 20. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20. Read verse 12 for me. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Read. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. You see that? Honor thy father and your mother, that your days may be long. So these young men that have joined gangs, that are terrorizing the community, they die at an early age. Why? Because they don't honor their father and mother. That's why every week there's a news, there's a, there's a story on the news, five dead bodies found on the streets. They've been gunned down. What happened? Gang violence. You understand? Revenge killings. Why? Because they don't honor their father and mother. So that's why now they don't live long. 
they die any they die they die young why because of breaking this commandment right here so let's go back you told me 21 verse 18 again come on the book of deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 18 pray if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son mm -hmm. which will not obey the voice of his father come on or the voice of his mother pray. and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them so now notice he says when they've chastened him will not hearken unto them so this father these parents were teaching their son god's laws but he rebelled against them it's not that they were just sitting there and not teaching their sons and their son the laws of god no they were doing it he just did not want to listen that's the key that's why he says and they have chastened him and will not hearken unto them so they were actually putting an effort to teach their son God's laws. He just didn't want to hear it. You understand? You see that thing? Give me that into 2027 verse 16. Because the reason why you see that this pandemic of gangsterism, terrorism in our community by our own sons that are carrying guns and knives, terrorizing our mothers, our fathers, our grandfathers and so forth is because the laws of God are not being taught in the house. So now the street is correcting them. Now the police will gun them down. The gang member will put them to death. You understand? The gang leader will stab, him, will stab him on the neck and chop his hair off. That's how they get corrected now. You understand? Now watch this. Deuteronomy 27 verse 16. Read there. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27 verse 16. Pray. Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother. Mm-hmm. And all the people shall say, Amen. You see that? It says, Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, meaning disrespectful to their parents. That's why it says, Set light, meaning they talk back, they're rebellious, they don't want to do nothing. Their parents say, Guess what? It says, What? That child will be cursed. And that's what you're seeing today. You understand? They join gangs, they get put to death, they end up in jail, they get raped. That's what's going on this day. Why? Because why? They broke the law that says, honor your father and your mother. You understand that your days may be long upon the earth. That's why they die early now. Okay? They just, they, they die, they drop like flies. Hmm? This is what's going on right now. Okay? Now go back to where it was at. Deuteronomy 21, verse 19 now. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 19. Rain. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him mm -hmm. and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. You see what he's saying? Then his mother and his father will grab the Negro, okay, and bring him out unto the elders of his city. So if it's happening in El Dorado Park, guess what would happen? They will grab the Negro and bring him to the elders of the city. If it's happening in Westbury, that's what they will do. Is happening in 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 um in what's the what's that place Mamilodi? You understand? That's what we would do. It's happening in Caltonville. Is that is happening in in Tukumsras? Because that's these are the hot spots of gang of gang violence. You understand? Um, here's another one. Uh, Be what what, what? Becker's Down, Tukumsras, okay, Bromos Park, Rachel Park, Eldo. These are the places that they say these are hot spots. For gangsterism and what gang violence you understand so that's what this is how we would handle it read verse 19 again come on the book of deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 19 Wait. then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and mm -hmm. bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place and unto the gate of his place because who was at the gates the elders of the city the ones that were elected by the most high god by their wisdom to judge matters and this is how the matter was judged when there was a what there was a little gangster boy in the house terrorizing his father and mother watch this verse 20 go ahead the book of deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 20 come on and they shall say unto the elders of his city mm -hmm. this our son is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice really? he is a gluten and a drunkard. Mm -hmm. You see that? Now they are telling the elders of the city, 
What's wrong with this boy? He will not obey. He's disobedient, he's rebellious and stubborn. He says he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton. So he just eats until his eyes pop out. Who's buying the food? Because he's, he's not working. When we go to Pretoria to teach the gospel to our people, you see young men, they wake up early, they come there, they just be smoking all day. They be drinking all day. They be, they being on their roller skates the whole day. You understand? Chasing after women. You understand? Smoking weed, puffing hardly. That's what they do all day. You understand? So where do they get the money for, to do all of this? Guess what? Their parents. Because those ones, the ones that we see, they don't, their parents don't teach them the laws of God. They don't teach them nothing. So they get rid of them. They give them money and get rid of them and say, just go here, go play with your friends. So now, they be, because they are idle, they do much evil. They rape, they rob, they murder, they steal, they stand in the cor at the corner, you understand? They take people's phones, their handbags, you understand? Groceries, they sell the groceries and buy weed. That's what they do, okay? Read it again, verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 20. Come on. And they, and they shall say unto the elders of his city, Mm -hmm. This our son is stubborn and rebellious. Come on. He, he will not obey our voice. Mm. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Now they are explaining to the elders of the city, the judges, okay, what's wrong with the child. Now watch this. Hold this. Give me Sirach 16 verse 11. Get Sirach Ecclesiasticus chapter 16 verse 11. I'm going to show you something. here, Because now they brought the matters to the judges. You understand? The leaders, the elders of the community say, this boy, he is rebellious and he's stubborn. He just eats. You understand? He gets drunk. He sleeps. He poops. That's all he does. Okay? And this, and, and he's disrespectful. Now watch this. It's like 16 verse 11. Come on. Ecclesiasticus chapter 16 verse 11. Read. Right? And if there be one stiff necked among the people. Mm-hmm. It is marvel if he escape unpunished. You see what God is saying? He says, if there be one stiff neck among the people, he says, it is marvel. Meaning what? You will be shocked if he escape unpunished. Meaning what? Judgment must be falling. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. If they don't repent, judgment must be falling. Go ahead. For mercy and wrath are with him. Mm -hmm. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. You see that? It says, mercy and wrath are with him. The him is the Lord. Mercy and wrath are with the Most High God. It says he was mighty to forgive if you get your mind right, if you obey, and he says he will pour out displeasure if you disobey, meaning judgment. Get 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 53. 2nd Ezra, okay? Chapter 16, verse 53. Watch this. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 53. Pray. Let not the sinner say that he has not sinned. Stop right there. Let not the sinner say he had not sinned. The sinner in this context is that stubborn and rebellious son who was being taught God's laws, who was being commanded to obey, but he did not want to obey. That's why he was taken to the elders of the city. Now he said, this is the same sinner. Let not the sinner say that he had not sinned because when they correct him and teach them God's laws, he does not want to obey. So he doesn't agree. He says, no, I'm not wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. That's why he says that it, let not the sinner say he had not sinned because the child is rebellious. So because, and guess what? The parents, they decided, you know what? We want to deal with him now because Aguirre does not want to obey us, although we are teaching him. So we need to take the matter to the next level so that the judges of the city can one can judge the matter. But this, the case in Deuteronomy 21 is talking about those parents that are teaching their son God's laws. But what you are seeing today with, and he's rebellious, he doesn't want to obey. Now the judges have to deal with it. Today, you see a lot of kids which are gangsters. They are terrorizing the community with guns and so forth. Their parents don't teach them. And those that their parents teach them, they rebel. You understand? But they will not go unpunished. Watch this. 
Read that again, verse 53. Okay, come on. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 53. Read. Let not the sinner say that he has not sinned. Mm -hmm. For God shall bend coals of fire upon his head. You see that? He said, don't say he has not sinned because he says, God will bend coals of fire upon his head. Meaning what? Judgment. He's going to get it. Go ahead. Which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. So he's proud. He disrespects his parents. He's proud against God's laws. He's bold against the commandments of the Most High. Read on. Verse 54. Mm -hmm. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, mm -hmm. their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. So the Lord does that. He knows all the imaginations of men. You understand? Their works, their thoughts, and what's in their mind. So the Lord knows that. That's why when judgment comes, it's not, it's not going to be on. A judgment is not an accident. You understand? It's by design. Jump down to verse 63. Watch this. Come on. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 63. Mm -hmm. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, mm -hmm. even them that sin and would hide their sin. You see that? Even them that sin and would hide their sin. The Lord says, I see you. You understand? The Lord says, I see you. You cannot escape. Jump down to verse 65. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 16. Verse 65. Come on. And, and when your sins are brought forth, mm -hmm. ye shall be ashamed before men. Come on. And your own sins shall be your shall be your accusers in that day. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, when your sins are brought forth, because now it's time for judgment. It says, and ye shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Because there is a God. He don't play games when it comes to this stuff. Keeping his laws, statutes and commands. Because he's a father. You understand? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something here. Um, go back now. Go back to Deuteronomy 21. Read verse 20 again. Because we went all these places to show you that they are not going to go unpunished. Okay? That's why I, I, made, I made a point to show you that, guess what? Because they disrespect their fathers and mothers, they are disrespectful. They are not going to go unpunished. They will be punished. You understand? Watch this. Go back. Deuteronomy 21, verse 8, verse 19. Come on, verse 20. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, Wait. This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. Come he on. is a glutton and a drunkard. Next verse. Come on. Verse 21, and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shall thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. You see what he's saying? He says, all the men of his city. Remember verse 20 says, and they shall say unto the elders of his city. You understand? The city that he dwells in. Verse 21 says, and all the men of his city shall smote him with stones that he died. And so shall thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. This was done to make sure that it puts fear on all the kids that are disrespectful to their parents. They want to be gangsters. They want to be carrying guns and knives all over around, terrorizing the sons and daughters, mothers and fathers and grandfathers. Listen, it says, no, put him to death. And then you're going to put evil away from among you. But guess what? Right now, we are, not, we, are not, we are not in our own land. So guess what? Now, the powers that be, they are the ones that judge the matter. You understand? How they see fit. But the Lord put the spirit upon them to bring forth judgment on them. Understand that? Okay? Watch this. Give me, yeah, the, the judgment was death. The community did it. You understand? Mob justice. Okay? He did, he did it. Okay, he did it put him to death. But we cannot do that today. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Romans real quick, okay? Romans. Okay? Romans.
You know what? Before you get me wrong, man, right? Hmm. Hold on. Give me the book of Exodus 21, verse 23. Because remember now, because we didn't, we now we cannot do what we are reading in Deuteronomy 21. Guess what happens today now? The Lord is bringing forth judgment on these young men that are terrorizing the community. I'm going to show you something. Now, when, what you notice is that in Deuteronomy 21, the parents were doing their job teaching their son, right? And when they did not want to hear, and when they couldn't handle it, they send the matters to who? They send the matters to the judges, the community. The community leaders, which is was the judges enrolled with wisdom. They judge the matters according to the laws of God. Now, because we are no longer under that law, here's the thing. Now. Give me Hebrews 10, okay? This is how judgment comes down now. The Lord is the one that does it now. Christ is the one that brings forth judgment on wicked Negroes. You understand? These gangsters, these, these gangsters that are terrorizing our communities if they don't repent. Okay? Hebrews 10. Start with, read verse 28. Hebrews 10, verse 28. Let's read there. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 28. Come on. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two mm -hmm. or three witnesses. You see that? If you despise Moses' law, which is what we read in Deuteronomy 21, the son who became a gangster, now, who is a gangster, he first terrorizes his own parents, then he goes out, he, he wants to terrorize the community because now he's learned how to get away with it in, he, in the house. But in Deuteronomy 21, he, he could not get away with it. That's why the community had to deal with it. And they dealt with it. Now, guess what? Because we don't have those set up anymore like that, guess what? The Lord is the one that will bring judgment upon these gangsters that are, that are, that are, that are freely reigning in our community, terrorizing and killing our mothers and our fathers. Watch this. Jump up to verse, verse 26, Hebrews 10, 26, because, because he's not listening to his father and his mother, he's stubborn and rebellious, now he goes to the streets. He wants to do the same thing. He joins the gang. But remember, because he joined the gang, it doesn't mean everything is all good because now he's joined the gang. No, when he rebels against the gang leader, guess what happens to him? A bullet to the head. You understand? Read that. Hebrews 10, 26. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 26. Come on. For if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. There remaineth no more sacrifice for us for sin. So now sinning willfully, that means you know what the law says, but you just do what? You go against it anyway. It's called willful sin. The Lord is saying there remaineth no more sacrifices for sin because Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. What we have now is get our minds right before he returns. Next verse. Read. Verse 27. Come on. But, but a certain fearful looking for of mm -hmm. judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. So you see what he's saying is, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment. A fearful looking for of judgment, because when you sin, sin willfully, you are looking for judgment. You're looking for, you're asking for death. That's what the Lord is saying. And a fiery indignation from who? The Most High. We shall devour the adversaries. Who's the adversaries in this case? Israelites who rebel against God's laws. You become an enemy to the Most High God. A fiery indignation will come down upon you. Next verse. Read. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Because that's how we dealt with it. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 21 verse 18 through 21. Read. Verse 29. Mm-hmm. Of how much sorrow punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace? Okay, all praises. Okay, um, read that again. Praises, yes. Verse 29. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 29. Come on. Of how much sorrow punishment 
Suppose mm. he shall he be thought worthy who has trotted under foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace? So now the question is, is as how much so of how much sort of punishment in one in one? Under Christ, the punishment is worse than what we read in Deuteronomy 21, verse 18 down. Under Christ, the punishment is worse. It says, what, do you, what makes you, what do you think the punishment is going to be? Suppose he, shall he be thought worthy? What is a worthy punishment under Christ? It says, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and has done despite the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace is, what, is the grace period that we have been given to repent and get our mind right, keep God's laws before the Lord returns. So now, guess what happens? Because we no longer have that setup where we have elders in the cities to be able to judge matters like that, how they did it, guess what? Christ is the one that does it now. So the punishment is worse under Christ. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. Verse 30. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 30. Mm -hmm. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. You see that? We know him that said, Vengeance belongeth unto him. So now the Lord is the one that recompenses the vengeance upon him. He's the one that does the killings now. He's the one that does the judgments now. He's no longer the community. Mm -mm. He does it. Okay, go ahead. I will recompense, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Ray, come on. It is a fearful thing to fall unto the hands of the living God. You see what he's saying? He says, it is a fearful thing. You better be afraid. That's why you see a lot of our people say, only God can judge me. They have no idea what they're saying. They just be quoting Tupac. That's not in the Bible. That's like what? That's strictly for my niggas. No, 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 no. That's not in the, he, that's not in the Holy Bible. You understand? He was saying that strictly for the niggas. No, we read in the Bible. There's no only God can judge me. Okay, now watch this. Now I'm going to show you something here. Because what we read is the Lord is the one that brings forth judgment because they don't listen to their parents. These young men who are rebellious against their parents, they become gangsters. They become monsters. They terrorize our community. They steal, they rob, they murder, they rape. They go to jail, they come out. They still do, do the same evils. Watch this. Given the book of Exodus 21, verse 23. Exodus 21, verse 23. Okay. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 23. Come on. If any mischief follow, mm -hmm. then thou shalt give life for life. Now read that again, verse 23. Come on. And if any mischief follow, mm. then thou shalt give life for life. Because guess what happens? I get it, these young men, they join gangs. So obviously, there's going to be mischief that will come up. There's going to be disagreements. Because they don't know, they don't have conflict resolution skills. The way they resolve issues is by gun, is by a knife, is by fist, is by what? Fighting amongst each other. That's how they resolve conflicts. They don't know because they're emotional. Like if they are raised by their mothers. You understand? So they raise them up to be emotional. So now when they join gangs, they become highly energized in their emotions. Guess what? Now they are quick with the trigger. Okay? Read that thing again, verse 23. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 23. Pray. Any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. He says, if there's any mischief, he says, you're going to give life for life. Meaning what? You kill my body? Okay, I'm going to kill you also. Then guess what? Another gang, another member from another gang, they also want to kill the one that just killed his brother. Now, guess what? It's, it's this vicious cycle of what? Revenge killings. We see them on the news now. You watch E! News? You watch News 24? That's what you're seeing right now. In Eldo, Westbury, Soshangube, Mamilodi, okay, Bronco Spread. We are seeing all these revenge killings by these young men, gangsters, okay, because of what? 
They don't know how to resolve conflicts. They're always having nigger moments. Okay? Watch this. Read on. Verse 24. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Read. Hand for hand, foot for foot. You see that? This is called what? Revenge killings. That's what they are doing in the community. Okay? Now, and now the, ki the children coming from school, fathers coming from work, mothers coming from work, now they are caught in the crossfire. And they don't give a damn when they do it. They just shoot to kill. Because they are filled with emotions because they are emotional. You understand? Now watch this. Give me first John 3.15. Because all of this behavior, the root cause is what? Hatred. You hate yourself, you hate your brother that look like you. So you don't count his life as what? Having value or valuable. So when you look at him, because you hate yourself, you're going to hate your brother as you hate yourself. So it's easy for you to put your brother to death. Get that in 1 John 3.15. Come on. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. Whoso ha whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. really? And he knows that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. You see that? So he says, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Because you hate your brother. You, is the reason why the only way you can hate your brother is because you hate yourself. So you hate your brother just, the, just as you hate yourself. That's why, guess what? It leads to murder. That's why you see all this gangsterism going on in the black community is because of what? Hatred of oneself. Having a poor self-image because you don't know how, who you are. We don't know how great we are. We don't know that God is a black man. We don't know that Christ is a black man. We don't know that we are God's chosen people. We forgot that. So now because the nations have lied to us, they've taught us white Jesus. When you see your brother that look like you, you just hate him. You see the white man, you see God. That's where this black on black crime is coming from. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea. Okay, give me Hosea 3. The reason why you see all these gangsterism going on is because of self-hatred. Not knowing who you are. Okay? Hosea chapter 4, start at verse 1. Hosea 4 and verse 1. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord, ye mm -hmm. children of Israel. Come on. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So now the Lord has a problem with the inhabitants of the land. The inhabitants of Mamilori, Hamans Kral, Soshangube, you understand, Bronco Sprite, Westbury, Eldo, okay, Reiches Park, um, Tukomsras, you understand, Beggarsdown, Cartonville. The Mosa God has a controversy in the land where the children of Israel we are scattered. Okay, go ahead. Because there is no truth. There is no truth. You understand, there is no truth, there is no law. That's what he's saying, right? No mercy. There is no mercy. That's why there's so much gangsterism going on in the black community. Terrorism happening in the black community because there's no mercy. We have no mercy one to another. Okay, go ahead. No knowledge of God in the land. There's no knowledge of God in the land, obviously. But there's knowledge of something else. There's knowledge of what? How to, how to shoot your brother. You understand? There's knowledge of prostitution. There's knowledge of how to join a gang how to move up the ranks in a gang. You understand? How to initiate new members into the gang. That's the knowledge that is prevalent in the communities where terrorism and gangsterism is running rampant. You understand? They listen to hip-hop. And hip-hop, these hip-hop artists, who Caspano Vest and all of that, who AKA, they are just, they, they are not, their music is not to uplift our nation. Their music is to destroy the young black men. Yeah, no, the, we are the only nation on earth that when we produce music, we call our women bees and hoes. We are the only nation that does that. The other nations don't do that. We are the only ones that do it. It's showing you the level of deep hatred that is rooted in the minds of the black men and the black women. You understand? Read. Come on. Verse 2. Read. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 2. Mm-hmm. By swearing and lying. 
You see that? By swearing and lying. Because we like to swear. I swear, I swear, I swear. By swearing. You ever hear these gangsters? Because they're emotional young black men and so-called colored men. They say, I swear to God, I'm going to kill you. How do you swear to the most high God that you're going to kill your brother? What the hell is this? But that's what's going on. Ray. And killing. Hey, you see and that? Thin. And killing. We swear. That's the controversy in verse 1. We swear. We lie. We kill one another. Go ahead. And stealing. And we rob each other. Ray. And committing adultery. Oh, that's a big one right there. And committing adultery. No marriage. We produce prostitution and whoredom in the community because wherever there's gangs, there's always prostitutes. There was a, there's always booze. There's getting drunk. You understand? That's what's going on. Ray. They break out. They break out, meaning they fight. Okay, come on. They're brawling. Ray. And blood touches blood. And blood touches blood. Guess what? Black on black crime. That's what this is explaining you. And blood touched blood. Killings of sons and daughters. You understand? Gangs. Because they disrespect their parents. Guess what? Now they join gangs because they think they are on some, some, some high level where they join the gang. They've got a gun in their hand. They've got a gun in their pocket and their knife on their back. They think now they're what? They think they're invincible. You see that? That's why you see so many dead bodies every week, just like, like flies. Why? Because of what? Black on black crime and self-hatred. Now watch this. Give me the book of Sirach. Give me Ecclesiasticus now. Give me Ecclesiasticus chapter 28. Because the spirit that is running rampant in these young black men that are killing each other, they are killing the sons and daughters, they are initiating young girls into these gangs. This is the spirit. Give me that in Sirach 28 verse 1. Ecclesiasticus, okay? Ray, the book of on. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 1. Ray. He that revengeth shall find vengeance from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. You see what the Bible is saying? He that revengeth shall find vengeance from the Lord. Because guess what? The reason why you see these revenge killings going on among gangs in the communities, you understand? Guess what? It's because the most High God, he says, I'm going to revenge now. He's the one that says, I'm going to do it. Because your brother do you wrong, you don't forgive your neighbor. You understand? You don't deal with, those, you don't deal with these matters the right way. So you deal with it by what? By pointing a gun at your brother and killing him. The Lord says, I'm going to kill you as well. It's only fair. You understand? Okay, jump down to verse 3. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 3. Mm -hmm. One man beareth hatred against another. You see that? One man beareth hatred against another. Because that's why the spirit of revenge and vengeance we are reading about in verse 1. That's the spirit of hatred. You understand? Because you are bearing hatred against your brother. When you are bearing hatred, that means what? It's in your spirit. You are bearing it. You are carrying hatred around for you against your brother. Go ahead. And does he seek pardon from the Lord? And these gangsters, guess what? They kill, they go to church. Praise the Lord for protection. Are you kidding? That doesn't make any sense because they've got the devil on them. Read verse 4 now. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 4. Read. He showeth no mercy to a man. Mm -hmm. Which is like himself. Come on. And does he ask forgiveness of his own sins? You see that? He says, he show no mercy to a man that is like himself. But now he's going to ask for forgiveness from the most High God to protect him after he killed his brother. That's the things that you're going to hear. Because I'm going to play some videos. You will see really how, how, how gone as a nation we have. Listen, we've gone down the rabbit hole. We need the laws of God to pull us out. Okay, go ahead. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 5. Okay, so when we are reading within the same chapter, you can just say verse 5, verse 6, because we know where we are. Read. Or oh, praise the same. If he that is but flesh nourish hatred. Mm -hmm. Come on. 
who will entreat for pardon of his sin. Do you see what he's saying? It's as if he that is but flesh nourisheth hatred. You just, you are, just, you are a man, but you are nourishing hatred. Because when you nourish something, it means you are taking care of it. That's what we read in verse 3 when he says, one man beareth hatred against another. Because you have the hatred, you are carrying it, you are nourishing it. So the hatred is, go, is growing because you are not using the laws of God to get your mind right. So when, when any mischief follow, like we read in Exodus 21, guess what? You're gonna, it's going to be life for life. Revenge killings. Killing like it's nothing. Okay? Verse 6, come on. Verse 6. Remember mm -hmm. thy end and let enmity cease. Meaning enmity cease. He said, remember thy end and let enmity cease. Meaning what? Let, this, the, let, let the gang violence stop. Let the hatred stop. Get rid of the hatred that you are bearing and nourishing in your mind. Because you are nourishing it to what? To use it as ammunition to kill your own brother. To terrorize your own community. You understand? To terrorize the brothers and sisters selling on the streets. You understand? To say, no, you're extorting money from them. Say, no, it's for protection. That's the evils that we're hearing now. You understand? Okay, go ahead. And let enmity cease. Remember mm -hmm. corruption and death and abide in the commandment. Jump down to verse 8. It says, remember corruption and death and abide in the commandment. Because why? If you don't let that enmity cease, that hatred to stop, guess what? The most High God will pay you a visit. Read verse 8. Read. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Abstain from strife, and thou shalt diminish thy sin. Mm -hmm. For a furious man will kindle strife. That's what these gangs, these, that's what these gangsters are doing. There's no honor among them. You understand? They like to say, no, because, you know, you, you, you feel you are part of something and so forth. You get protection. But if you do anything, if there's strife going on, you understand? There's any mischief. Guess what? You must know how it's going to get resolved with a bullet. That's how they resolve issues. Okay? Now watch this. Jump down to verse 10. Read verse 10 now. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. As the matter of the fire is, so it burneth. And mm -hmm. the fire a It says, as the matter of the fire is, so it burneth. So because fire burns. Okay, go ahead. And as a man's strength is, so is his wrath. You see what he's saying? He says the man's strength is proportional to his wrath. You understand? A man's strength is proportional to his wrath. So this strength is going into what? Is going into that hatred. You understand? The wrath, the actions of the wrath that will come from that man is going to be what? Death. There's no negotiation. There's no none of that. Okay, go ahead. And according to his riches, his anger rises. You see that? His strength is equivalent to his wrath. His riches is equivalent to his anger. Go ahead. And the stronger, and the stronger they are, which contend, the more they will be inflamed. You see that? The stronger they are, which contend, meaning which fight, which argue, because they nourish anger and hatred, because they strive. It says the more what? The more they will be inflamed. Now they become even more angry, more upset. Guess how they resolve it? That's how they quench their anger with the gun. They quench their anger by recruiting young men. You understand? So this vicious cycle continues. Okay. Now watch this. Jump down to verse. Mm, let me see. Read verse 11. Keep the reading. book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 28, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And hasty contention kindles a fire. And in and hasty fighting, shuddeth blood. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, in hasty contention, kindleth a fire. Because guess what? There's no reasoning going on here. It's only emotion. So when you examine, it doesn't matter how higher up a gang leader is or a gang member is, whatever they call themselves, it doesn't matter. They are run by emotions. They are a highly emotional men. They are highly emotional. There is no sense in their head. That's why it says, "In hasty contention kindleth a fire, and in hasty fighting sheddeth blood." That's why it's easy for them to kill each other. Something small, they will blow each other's brains out. 
That's what we're reading here. They move with the spirit of haste. Why? Because they're emotional. There's no reasoning. There's no consideration in their head. Or if I make this decision, what's going to be the outcome? They don't think about that. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Give me Sarah 27 verse 18. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 27, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For as a man has destroyed his enemy, so hast thou lost the love of thy neighbor. You see that? So now, because now you look at your neighbor as your enemy. You don't look at your neighbor as your brother anymore. That's why it says blood touched blood in Jose. Why? Because young black men, they are given guns. Because remember also, another thing to think about is that these black men, they don't make guns. They don't make bullets. So they get their guns from somewhere. You understand? The police also, they don't, they don't, they don't manufacture guns. Because in, 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 in a, one of the videos, you'll see that they say they are, getting, they are getting these guns from the cops. Okay? Let's say that's true. They are getting guns from the cops, right? But the police, they don't make guns. The police don't make guns. So, obviously, they are getting these guns from somewhere else. Somebody is supplying these guns from elsewhere. You understand? Now, watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something here. Give me Deuteronomy 21 verse 1. Okay? Remember, we went, we went all, I'm, 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 I went to all these precepts to show you the spirit that runs, that runs in the minds of these gangs. You understand? It doesn't matter what they call themselves, how they operate, how long they've been operating, how long they've been terrorizing the community. They are not afraid of nobody. They work with them, whatever the case may be. The spirit that runs through them is hatred, anger, and emotions. They are all emotional. They are all raised by their mothers. The father was not around. You understand? So now they raised to be effeminate and they don't know how to resolve conflict. And because how they resolve conflict, they always have to have a nigger moment. You understand? That's how they resolve conflict with a gun. Watch this. Now read Deuteronomy 21 verse 1 because now I'm going to show you something now. What happens is that as soon as they fight, they guess what they do? They gun each other down. Okay? They, they, they go through something called revenge killing. So the vicious cycle of revenge killing just continues. Watch this. And who's doing that? The most High God's wrath is upon them. Now they are killing one another. Watch this. Deuteronomy 21 verse 1. Watch this. Okay? The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 21, verse 1. Read. If one be found slain in the land, which the Lord mm -hmm. thy God giveth thee to possess it, lying in the field, mm -hmm. and it be not known who has slain him. So now here it goes into what it says. If one found, he is if you find somebody died in the land, because right now we are not in Jerusalem no more. We are in the lands of our captivity. And in the lands of our captivity, we are doing evil instead of repenting in the lands of our captivity as the Lord commanded us. Now it says, if one be found slain in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Laying in the field, meaning now this boy, these gang members have been put to death. They've been shot dead, bullet to the head. And it be not known who had slain him, meaning who killed him. Isn't that what, that's always the case? Because they don't want to speak. When the police show up, he says, we don't snitch. I give that's the mindset. So nobody knows who gunned them down. Nobody knows who killed that boy. Nobody knows who killed those boys, five boys that were put to death. Because there's a case now in Eldo. Watch this. Okay, because they say they don't snitch. Give me Sirach 27. Okay, give me Sirach 27 verse 16. I'm going to show you something here. You know, what's that of verse 15. Hmm. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 27, verse 15. Go ahead. The strife of the proud is bloodshedding. That's what we read in Sirach 28. Is the same thing we, re we read in Sirach 28, verse 11. It says the strife of the proud, meaning these young men, they are proud. They don't want to obey what the parents say. They don't want to obey what the Bible says. Okay. It says their what? Their strife ends up in blood. Their argument always ends up in blood. Their disagreement always ends up in blood. That's why it says the strife of the proud is blood shedding. 
Go ahead. And their revelings are grievous to the ear. And their revilings is grievous to the ear. Because guess what? It what? It aches you. Because they don't know how to talk. They don't know how to deal with one another. That's why it says what is grievous to the ear. Wait. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Whoso discovereth secrets, loseth his credit. You see what he's saying? He says, whoso discovereth secrets, loseth his credit. Because guess what? I get about it, they don't snitch. If you do tell the police who did it, you saw it, guess what? It says you're going to lose your credit. Meaning what? They're going to come for you. If you live in that house, they're going to kill everybody in that house. That's what's going on this day. Go ahead. And shall never find friend to his mind. You shall never find friend to your mind. You're not going to find friends because now they're going to call you a snitch. Once you are a snitch, they say snitches get stitches. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 17. Love thy friend. Mm -hmm. And be faithful unto him. Come on. But if thou be royest his secrets, follow no more after him. Because you're going to die. They will put you to death. Because it says, love thy friend. Because well, not the way they, they say they love each other is that you do evil, you don't tell. He does evil, nobody says nothing. When the police show up, don't say nothing. Just be quiet. Don't snitch. So that's their version of love. You understand? So it says, but if thou be raised his secrets, you reveal. It says, that Negro next door, he's the one that killed those four boys. He's the one that killed the grandmother. He's the one that killed the grandfather. He's the one that killed the, the, the child from coming from school. It says, what? If you be, but if thou be raised his secrets, follow no more of time because he will kill you. You understand? That's what the Lord is, is showing us right there. Okay? Now, go back to Deuteronomy now. Read Deuteronomy 21 verse 1 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21 verse 1. Mm -hmm. If one be found slain in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it, laying in the field, mm -hmm. and it be not known who has slain him. And nobody knows who did it. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5, and the priests of the, of the sons of Levi shall come near. For them the Lord thy God has chosen to minister unto him. You know what? You know what? Read verse 2. Read Deuteronomy 21 verse 2. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21 verse 2. Come on. Then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth. Mm -hmm. And they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. Because remember, it says, and thy elders and thy judges shall come forth. We don't have that now, you understand? Because we don't own anything. The only access of power that we have is us keeping God's commandments and living peaceably upon, uh, among all men if it be possible. It says, then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. That's where when you watch these movies where they... They say police line do not cross. This is a crime scene and so forth. They get it from the Bible. That's why it says they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. So now who does it? The police come and do it. You understand? The police department will come and put police line do not cross among what? Among those that are deceased. They will cover them with black, with black, with black bags and so forth. You know, they will cover the dead bodies. So that's what this is going into. This is a crime scene. Okay. Okay, read on. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man, even the elders of that city, shall take an heifer, which has not been wrought with him, with, and which has not drawn in the yoke. So now, this is going into what? The sacrifice that must be made. It says that the city which is next to the unto the slain, the elders of that city, meaning what, they will make a sacrifice. The elders of the next to the city, the elders of the city next to where the body was slain, you understand? They said what? They're going to they gonna perform a sacrifice because blood must be what? Shed in order for, uh, for them to atone the crime scene. Okay, now read verse 5. Watch this. Verse 5. And the priests the sons of Levi shall come near. For them 
the Lord thy God has chosen to minister unto him. Mm -hmm. And to bless in the name of the Lord. Right. And by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. You see that thing? Because the Levites were the judges. It says, by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. Not, that goes into what? Finding suspects, questioning suspects, finding out what the issue is. How did this happen? Who did it? You understand? Who witnessed it? So on and so forth. That's what they would do. So today the police is the one that does it. The detectives in the police department, they are the ones that would do this. You understand? Because of what? Because of young black men, young so-called colored men on the street, in the st on the street corners, killing, intimidating, and terrorizing the community. Now watch this. Hmm. Let me play this video now. Watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what, 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 what is going on this day. Okay. Let me share my screen. Five bodies with bullet wounds have been found next to five. Okay. Can you hear the sound? Bodies yes, with bullet wounds yes, have been found okay, next. Five bodies with bullet wounds have been found next to the Golden Highway. This is the second mass shooting in Johannesburg's El Dorado Park in a matter of weeks, and police say the circumstances around these deaths are still unknown and still being investigated. Linda Kushlekulu is joining police on an operation in the area this morning and is pushing for answers. Linda, thanks for being there for us today. What, what could have happened? Are the police saying anything? Is this an act of vigilantism? Well, uh, Anika, good morning to you. Um, police obviously have told us that they are still investigating the details around that uh, uh, five people that have been found dead. But what you are seeing right now is some of the Okai Mula operations that are in fact now a couple of meters from where that those bodies were found with the incident of the crime and in fact uh, the, the scene of the crime rather and in fact uh, we are working with uh, general elias mawela who's just trying to track uh, some people here that when we arrived here had ran away percy my colleague will just try to give you uh, that picture of those elusive people that ran away and across what it seems like a river stream, but they are on those bushes, basically running away from the police and trekking uh, to see the police. Uh, the police wanted to speak to them, but uh, they are on the other side. So what we are basically doing at the moment is just trying to track them with uh, the police as police try to find a way in which they can access them at this stage. But uh, they believe, uh, police, that this was a one group that was conducting criminal activity and it was confronted by someone who robbed them when in a criminal manner that obviously saw those five uh, bodies dead. But let's just place a bit with my colleague, uh, Percy, uh, just to uh, move closer to the general, uh, uh, the provincial commissioner of police, uh, General Elias Mawela, to get a sense of what is currently happening at the moment. We are just trying to get closer uh, to the general. I see Ubab Masondo is trying to brief him in terms of our intentions. General, just give us a sense of what's happening right now. No, uh, we want to go and search those other people. When we arrive here, you have seen that they've crossed the stream and they've run that other side. Mm. You can also see that some of the people they're just walking with us that side, mm. uh, wearing some blankets and whatever. Yeah. So the information in our disposal is that the people who are operating this side, they're heavily armed and then you, they cover their firearms under the blankets and so forth. Yeah. Because mostly are uh, these guys who are from Lesotho. Yeah. So we want to go other side and also that we clean that area and check. You can see that they are running. Yeah. As you can see there, they are running. Yeah. So if they know that there's nothing wrong, what is the reason for them to can run away from us? All, all right, yeah. General, you did say earlier on when we spoke to you that you are suspecting that uh, there was criminal activity taking place when that incident happened. But just give us, in a comprehensive way, as far as you understand, what are some of those details around the death that we saw yesterday? No, uh, the details is that, you know, those people, when they were found, those bodies there, obviously wearing some gloves, having some equipment that is being used, you know, to commit crime and so forth. I mean, not say it uh, on TV what kind of equipment which were found, because those equipment will form part of our investigations. So clearly, they themselves, they were up to something or they were doing something 
something and then they were they were accosted by some of their com uh, uh, competitors just as the last one general yeah. we saw these people crossing the river stream earlier on it seems they remain elusive because now they are running away from the police what is it that's going to be done to try and figure out what is happening inside there you are speaking about people that might be dangerous that might be covering firearms with those blankets tell us what is the plan now to get those people no the plan is that you know even that other side of the dumping side, we do have police officers who are sweeping the area coming from this other side. So for us, the team which is with me here, so somewhere along the way we may find them. But you also see that we are following up on leads uh, that uh, the people who are operating and terrorizing this area are believed to have blankets. And what they are saying is that they've spotted some of those people that fit their descriptions. And now what they are doing is basically trying to track them. Some police have entered here, as my colleague will show you. Some police have surrounded this area. And uh, those people, we saw them running away. But essentially, police, what they are trying to do... Now. I hope you, you brothers and sisters are just going to keep the ground. You understand what the police are dealing with? Now, what you, the video you just saw is what's happening in Eldorado, Eldorado Park. They found five dead bodies, you understand, along the highway. So now you see there's those, those young men that are running away from the police. You understand? Because here's what the scriptures say about this thing. Because nobody wants to talk. The police now, they have to deal with the crime scene. They have to deal with the people that have witnessed this thing. They want to ask questions. They are doing investigations. So that's what we just read here in Deuteronomy 21. You understand? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy. Give me Proverbs 28 verse 1. Proverbs 28 verse 1. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. Come on. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. You see that? The wicked flee when no man pursueth. What were they running away from? Why were they running away in the first place? The Bible is telling you the wicked will flee where no man pursue it. The police was, was not chasing them. They saw the police, they ran. You understand? So the Bible is telling you what's in their mind. They are wicked. They are evil. Those are evil men. They are guilty. You understand? The Bible is the Bible is a true book. Because guess what? If if they were they have nothing to hide, here's the next part of that verse. Go ahead. But the righteous are bold as a lion. But the righteous are bold as a lion, meaning the righteous will not be moved. They're not going to go because they didn't do anything wrong. But the wicked will skip town where no man pursued them. The police was not chasing them. You understand? So that's an admission of guilt right there. Give me Romans chapter 13 verse 1. Watch this. Because now five, 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 five bodies have been found. There are five dead bodies have been found. Nobody's saying nothing about it. And that place is known as a hotspot for what? Gang violence. Nobody's saying nothing. You understand? Mom's the word. Okay? Romans chapter 13 verse 1. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 13 verse 1. Come on. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Mm -hmm. For there is no power but of God. Read. Right? The powers that be are ordained of God. You see what he's saying? He says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. Meaning what? The police, the judge, and so on and so forth. So, remember, the police, they are set up by, the Lord has set that thing up. You understand? In the lens of our captivity, that we can be able to do what? We can be able to, the certain matters we cannot handle. So, we have to set, send them, we have to contact the proper authorities to deal with those matters. So, that's why it says, and there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So the Lord has set them up. Okay? Because if you take the police out of the community, guess what? Gangsterism will become worse. Our children will get raped, broad daylight. You understand? Our children will be, will be kidnapped. The black women will get raped. That's what would happen. We will rob each other. That's what would happen if you take the police out of the community. You understand? Right now, our people, the reason why... They do it with timing is because you can just call up the police. They'll show up. You understand? Read on. Verse 2. Come on. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore resisted the power. Whosoever does what? Whosoever therefore resisted the power. You say whosoever resisted the power. 
meaning what? They run, they resist arrest, so on and so forth. Whosoever resisted the power, what do they do? Resisted the ordinance of God. You are resisting God's laws because guess what? They come with the law. You understand? They come in to investigate the crime that has taken place. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 21. We did that when we were in our land. But right now, we're not in our land. We're in the lands of our captivity. That's why the police has been set up for those things. Okay, go ahead. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Because that's exactly what's going to happen to them. They shall receive to themselves damnation. Because who's going to bring damnation unto them? The Lord will do it. Give me that in uh, 1 Thessalonians 2. The Lord will do it. Okay? They will receive to themselves damnation. Meaning what? Condemnation. 2 Thessalonians 2. Okay? Read verse, read verse 11. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So the delusion is what? Is gangsterism. They believe in that. They believe gangsterism is the way. Gangsterism is the way to get money, the way to get power, the way to, uh, to move up the ranks, to be somebody in the community while you are destroying your own people. So they've what? They've convinced themselves with that delusion, okay? That they should believe a lie. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. You see that? That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. They don't believe the laws of God. They don't believe law. They hate law and order. That's the mindset of our people. Go ahead. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. But had pleasure in killing their own people and terrorizing the children. They have played a pleasure in that thing. Okay. That's a classic example that they what? They've got the devil on them. Understand. Go back to Romans chapter 13. Okay. Romans chapter 13. Verse 3 now. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 13. Verse 3. Pray. For rulers are not terror to good works, mm -hmm. but to the evil. You see that? It says rulers are not terror to good works. So, meaning what? The police are not going to terrorize you if you are doing good works. You keep the commandments, you don't lie, you don't cheat. You do what the Bible says. It says they are not what? They are not rulers to what? They are not a terror to good works. The laws of God. Okay, go ahead. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Hold on. Read, read verse 3 again. There's something I want to touch on. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For rulers are not a terror to good works. Go ahead. But to the evil. But to the what? But to the evil. But the wicked that we read in Proverbs 28, verse 1. But to the evil. So the rulers, they are going to be a terror to those that do evil. And guess what? Because they know they do evil, they are evil as hell. You understand? That's why they run when the police show up. Go ahead. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Mm -hmm. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. You see that? He says, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Meaning, keep the commandments of the Lord. Stop killing and hating your neighbor. Go ahead. For he is the minister of God to mm -hmm. thee for good. Go ahead. But if, thou, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. You see that? You see that? That's what we read in Proverbs. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid. You are afraid enough to do what? You're going to run when the police show up. Okay, go ahead. For he beareth not the sword in vain. You see that? Because he's not going to bear that sword, meaning the gun, in vain. Because what? He's a terror to evil works. Evil doers. Right? For he is the minister of God, mm -hmm. a revenger to execute wrath upon that doeth evil. You see, upon him that doeth evil. So he is a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So the Lord is the one that is putting the spirit upon them to do this. Meaning what? The police to deal the way they do. The most is the one that's doing that. Another thing is that they don't know why you see they show no mercy to these gangsters to these gang leaders and so forth, you understand, gang members, is because they are terrorizing the community. So now, the way they respond 
they respond with an army. Now they come with R5s and all that. They shooting Negroes to death. Why? Because they are a terror to the community. That's what we read in Leviticus 26, verse 16. The Lord says, I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to use your own. You're going to be a terror to your own self. That's what we see, you understand, in Eldorado Park. Now watch this. Let me, let me play the next video, okay? I'm going to play the next video, okay? Watch this. Cape Town is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's also one of the most dangerous. We're taking a closer look at a wave of deadly violence sweeping across Cape Town, South Africa. Over the past decade, a lethal mix of gangs and guns has caused a surge in the murder rate. Certainly in many areas there is a crisis. The lead has just been taken off the boiling kettle and it's boiling over. Last year, more than 3,000 people were murdered here. The number has doubled in a decade. Look at it! In some areas, the situation is so volatile that emergency services... Even the police don't want to come here. How did... It's so bad that the police does not even want to go in there to deal with them. There's a they, they must just kill each other. You understand? This is Cape Town. Cape Flats. Cape Town reached crisis point. We just gonna quickly do the update of the weekend. So about seven people were shot. Five, Five males, one, one female, and one child were shot. Pastor Craven Engel runs a pioneering project called Ceasefire, based in one of the most violent areas of the city, Hanover Park. It's happening now, where civilians get shot. Then this can happen to anyone. Craven and his team monitor gang violence in the district and, where possible, step in to calm things down. Well, a busy day can easily be like 17 incidents of violence in the area and multiple shots of more than about 60 shots fired there. The team is made up of reformed gang members. We started out by using guys that we recruited from the street and we helped them to recover. We trained them strategically to go and help their own kind. They're known as the interrupters. But thanks, guys. The violence interrupter is at the front end of the violence, but it must also be a credible messenger in the community and credible with the gangs. Just down here, we had a shooting here about five minutes ago. And there, another shot's been fired. The interrupters use a technology called Shot Spotter. It employs sophisticated acoustic sensors set up across the area to detect and locate gunfire incidents in real time. There's a shot coming in here. We can go to the area where it's been fired. And this is how it is in our community here. Shots get fired, incidents happen, life goes on as normal. Craven's project is based in an area of the city known as the Cape Flats, a patchwork of townships southeast of the city centre. Last year, nearly 2,500 people were murdered in these townships, almost 80% of the city's total homicides. In other parts of Cape Town, you know, particularly the wealthier middle class areas, the murder rate has remained relatively stable or is non existent. It's highly unequal in terms of the distribution of murder. It's been estimated that there are 93 gangs in Cape Town with 100,000 members. Gangs in Cape Town with 100,000 gang members. That's crazy. Hold this, we're coming back. Give me First Samuel. Okay, give me First Samuel 3. Give me First Samuel chapter 3. Okay. First Samuel 3 verse 11. Read that for me. The book of First Samuel chapter 3 verse 11. Come on. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of the one that heareth it shall tingle. You see what God is saying? He says, I'm going to make your ears to ring. When you hear the, the statistics, when you hear the level of gangsterism happening in the communities, 
in the nation of Israel. He says, it's going to make your ears to tingle. It is going to make your ears to ring. I mean, these things, they are, these numbers are staggering. You understand? And these are only the numbers that are accounted for. What about the numbers that are not accounted for? Okay. These criminal gangs are particularly well organized, but also particularly violent. They are rooted into the community with a system that's in place. What's been happening in Cape Town in the past few years has been an intensification of gang conflict. Over the past decade, this conflict has been fueled by deadly weapons. The key issue in South Africa in terms of the murder rate has been the influx of high-powered firearms into Cape Town. Many are fueled by deadly weapons. The key issue in South Africa in terms of the murder rate has been the influx of high-powered firearms so, into Cape Town. So, so that's what Many I was mentioning, that there's, there's influx of guns that are coming into Cape Town. Who's bringing these guns? Because these gang members don't manufacture guns. Nor do they make any bullets. They don't even know anything about uh, manufacturing a gun. They just know how to use it to kill their own. That's it. Okay. So who's bringing these guns into the Cape Flats? Who's bringing these guns into Cape Town? We're going to find out in a second. Go ahead. These guns aren't coming from criminal networks, but from the police. Hold on. The influx of high-powered firearms into Cape Town. Many of these guns aren't coming from criminal networks, but from the police. We know the police don't make no guns. Okay, they don't make guns. 16, Chris Prinsloo, a former police colonel, pleaded guilty to selling 2,400 guns to an arms dealer who that, sold that, them that. on to gangsters. Who's responsible for bringing these guns? Because he's used to this white man, this white man, this white man, 16, used, to Chris be Prince. He used to be a cop. He's the one that's responsible for bringing these guns into Cape Town, which means he's connected to people outside of Cape Town or outside of the country even that supply him with guns, guns like this. I'm going to show you something here. Okay. Give me the book of Genesis real quick. I'm going to show you something here. Genesis chapter 4. Okay, Genesis chapter 4 and verse, verse 22. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And Zillah, the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 22. Uh -huh. And Zillah, she also bare Tabul Cain, an instructor of the artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tabul Cain was Nama. Okay, so it says, and Zilla, she also bare two balcain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, meaning what? Weaponry. Even from Genesis right here, they already started making guns, weapons. You understand? This is the lineage of Cain right here. They are known for making what? Weaponry. Because that's the spirit that God blessed Cain and his descendants with the what with the spirit of war on them how to make guns they'll make the best guns where to get guns manufacturing guns because black men don't do that so when you look at all these gang violence that are happening in our communities who's bringing these guns in the white man is doing it the white man is the one that's bringing these guns into our communities because our people don't make guns they don't make bullets no the white man is the one that's what the Lord is telling you right there. Read that thing again, verse 22. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 22. Uh -huh. And now, she also bare Tabal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tabal Cain was Nama. Now watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 27. Okay, give me Genesis 27. I'm going to show you the blessing that our forefather put, our forefather Isaac put on Esau. Okay, Genesis chapter 27 and verse, verse 39. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 27 and verse 39. Come on. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. 
Come on. And of the dew of heaven from above. Meaning what? Esau, because Esau um, is Cain coming back in the earth. Esau is Cain coming back in the earth. So here is saying, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Meaning him and his descendants will live on the best places on earth. That's why when, when white people came here this side 500 years ago, they arrived, guess what? They, Cape Town was one of the main land that they occupied. They kicked the inhabitants out. They occupied that place. They put, they pushed them in the ghettos, Cape Flats and so forth. They occupied the best places in Cape Town as an example. You understand? So it says, and of the dew of heaven from above, meaning they are going to be everywhere. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 40. And by thy sword shall thou live. You see that? And by thy sword shall thou live. Meaning what? The spirit of war was put upon Esau and his descendants. You understand? And by thy sword shall thou live. That's why they don't vote for nothing. They want to come into a country. They want to conquer it. They wanted the, the, the minerals up on the continent. They came here guns blazing. They were killing our forefathers and foremothers and kicking them out of their houses so they can occupy lands. They can take their, 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 their livestock and so forth and steal the resources on the ground. And they came with a gun. That's why it says, by his sword, by the sword he will live, by violence. You understand? Read on. And shall serve thy brother. Okay, so that's it on that. Now, what I want to show you is that what you are seeing here on the, on, on the video, he, this is the culprit that's responsible for bringing the guns, not just him, because it's many of them. All these white folks, they are the ones that are bringing guns into the community. They are the reason why there's so much gang violence in our community, because first, they dealt with us mentally and spiritually and psychologically. You understand? They taught us to hate each other. They divided us during the, when they were during the, the Bantu stands and so forth. They divided us. So now they divide us so we hate each other. So now they, to increase the hatred, what do they bring? They bring white Jesus. They bring guns. Now the black men just be gunning each other down. And the white man, the real enemy, is sitting there in the background playing the puppet master. A form of firearms into Cape Town. Many of these guns aren't coming from criminal networks, but from the police. In 2016, Chris Prinsloo, a former police colonel, pleaded guilty to selling 2,400 guns to an arms dealer who sold them on to gangsters. It emboldened specific gangs, and those gangs then started to take on others and rarely escalated the gang conflict to the stage of a war. The reason why he brought these guns is to escalate the gang violence. I mean, there's already hatred going on in our communities. We hate each other because we've forgotten that we are the children of Israel. Now they want to escalate the violence. That's why you see xenophobia is on the rise. Who's doing it? The white man is behind it. And you see wicked, dumb black men who are attacking their own brothers and sisters, but they are afraid to confront the white man. They are afraid to confront the Chinese men. They are afraid to confront the Arabs. They will go to their own brothers and take their frustration on them. That's how low we have fallen as a people, man. You understand? Investigators have linked more than a thousand murders to these firearms, including 261 cases in which children were victims. Even the children. Go back to Leviticus 26. Okay? Leviticus 26, because we read it earlier. No, 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 not Leviticus. Deuteronomy 32. We read it earlier. He says even the children were the victims. Now, because of this gang violence, the children are also suffering this thing. Get that. Deuteronomy 32. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 25. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 25. Come on. The sword without and terror within. You see that? Shall just to, they, they, hold on. They bring the guns into the community to escalate the terror within our communities. Just like during the time of apartheid, you know what they were doing? During the time of apartheid, they brought drugs into our community. You understand? 
They brought cocaine into our community. They brought heroin into our community. Not only that, they brought, they were destroying our forefathers and foremothers during the 60s, the 50s, the 70s with tear gas. And in those tear gases, guess what they put? Chemical weapons, because South Africa had a chemical, biological, and chemical weapons pro program called Project Coast. And Boulder Basson, he was the he was the main leading scientist of Project Coast. Guess what they was doing? They were just escalating the violence in the in the community, causing confusion among brothers and sisters. You understand? I'm gonna deal with that Project Coast lost will. Okay. Under previous president Jacob Zuma, police corruption became endemic. Now is Mshololo's fault. Mshololo is responsible for this. Ah, uh, come on now. We just saw. Let's back up because I know some of you forgot. Firearms into Cape Town. Many of these are fueled by deadly weapons. The key issue in South Africa in terms of the murder rate has been the influx of high-powered firearms into Cape Town. Many of these guns aren't coming from criminal networks, but from the police. In 2016, Chris Prinsloo, a former police colonel, pleaded guilty to selling 2,400 guns to an arms dealer who sold them on to gangsters. So this is the real culprit who's bringing these things in. Michelle, don't make no guns. This princely guy, this white bure guy who used to be a cop, he's the one. And all his other people, his other friends that he works with. But in this documentary, guess who they are blaming? They are blaming the government and they are blaming Sholozi for this. I'm going to show you why they are doing it. It emboldened specific gangs and those gangs then started to take on others and rarely escalated the gang conflict to the stage of a war. Investigators have linked more than a thousand murders to these firearms, including 261 cases in which children were victims. Under previous president Jacob Zuma, police corruption became endemic. On the ground, gangs recruit corrupt officers who provide tip-offs about raids. This is taking place in the context of high-level corruption. This is taking place in the context of high-level corruption. What is he saying? That's dog whistle talk. That's dog whistle talk to mean Msholoz is the one that's doing it. And the majority of the people in parliament, in government, is our people. So who are they blaming? They are blaming our people, as always. I'm going to show you. Give me Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 9. I'm going to show you. They always blame us, but the white man is always behind the stuff. Always. The Bible tells you that thing. We what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, uh -huh. which deceiveth the whole world. Come on, on, I need you to read quicker. Come on. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Meaning the people that he works with. Because this... He, when he says the serpent, this great, great dragon was cast out, he's not talking about some creature, no, he's talking about the white man. He says that all serpent called the devil, meaning deceiver, and Satan, opposer, which deceiveth the whole world. Nobody think, nobody is actually sitting down to say, the person that is actually causing so much confusion in this earth is this white man right here. Nobody knows. That's why it says, he deceiveth the whole world. Everybody is deceived by him. Okay, including the other nations as well. Read. And I beheld a loud voice saying in heaven, mm -hmm. now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Read. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. For the what? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. You see that part right there? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down because they accuse us on a daily basis they accuse us on the news on social media listen whenever you see on the news it's always some black politician that is being accused of something hmm? who's owning the media the white man we don't own the media 
We don't own these publishing houses. None of them. Mm -mm. The Lord is telling you that they are going to accuse us. And he's going to tell you how was the frequency of the accusations. Keep reading. Which accused them before our God day and night. You see that? Which accused them before our God day and night. So this white man with his media, he uses the media to paint a narrative to say, because listen, we don't make no guns. We don't make no bullets. We don't make no bombs or none of that. They do. And because of that, it's easy for them because, because the gang violence and the gangsterism is happening in the community. Who's bringing the guns in? They are. It's not the black man that's killing each other. No, the white man Go deals with that's why it says um in verse nine read verse nine again i'm going to show you that he does is he that white man that you just saw on the screen that brought 2400 guns into the community he's not working by himself watch this revelation 12 verse 9 again i'm going to show you that the book of revelation chapter 12 verse 9 mm -hmm. and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan really? which deceiveth the whole world. Uh -huh. He was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. And his angels were cast out with him, meaning his allies, the people that support this man. These are the nations that support him. That's what he's talking about. That's what's, And his angels, meaning what? His allies were cast out with him because they are all working together to do what? To destroy the sons and daughters of Jacob. There's a conspiracy. Don't get it twisted. There's a conspiracy to destroy the 12 tribes of Israel, wherever we are scattered. You understand? I'm not denying that we're killing each other. Don't get it twisted. Don't think that I'm going off top. No, I'm on topic. But I'm trying to show you that they will always make it seem like, listen, these guns just show up. No. It doesn't happen like that. Okay? Read verse 10 again. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God come and on. the power of his Christ. Uh -huh. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Come on. Which accused them before our God day and night. You see that? Which accused them before our God day and night. And the reason why they're there, because remember, they're the ones that are going overseas and bringing guns in. And then they end up in the community where they know already, there's already divisions among us. We don't get along because we're no longer keeping God's commandments. You understand? So it's easy to just blame us. Yes, we take responsibility of our people that there's killing each other and all that, which is happening, which is true. Don't get it twisted. But what I'm showing you, the reason why now they're acting as though they are not responsible for it. Watch this. Give me Revelation 17 verse 6. I'm going to show you something here. Because they comfort themselves when they kill us or when we kill each other because, and they have something to do with it directly or indirectly. But they find comfort in that. I'm going to show you. Revelation 17 verse 6. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 6. Go ahead. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Stop right there. It says, and I saw the woman. The woman is making reference to who? Babylon the Great, America. America rules the earth. And guess what? America is ruled by Esau. Esau rules the whole earth, which is the white man. They call themselves French, Europeans, Dutch, Portuguese, Americans. They are all the same. Germans, they are all the same. Watch this. It says what? Read verse 6 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints so they are drunken when somebody is drunken that the woman is talk about who Esau, america babylon the great it says i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints if somebody is drunk that means they've drank to a point where they cannot they're staggering like a drunkard that they are staggering they cannot walk straight it says they are drunken with the blood of the saints meaning what the blood of our forefathers and foremothers the gangs killing themselves, they're killing each other, the abortion clinics, the abortion places where they say, you know, come and have a safe abortion and all that. They comfort themselves in that. They get drunk 
when this, this, the, the blood of the sons, are, the, the blood of our sons and daughters gets spilled on a daily basis, whether through gang violence, abortion, teenage pregnancy, whatever. As long as the blood of the 12 tribes of Israel is spilled, they are happy with that thing. That's what they are drunk at. When somebody is drunk, that means they like to drink. In this context, they like to kill. Read again, verse 6. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Go ahead. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. The martyrs, the martyrs of Jesus. Meaning our forefathers, the apostles that died defending this gospel. Go ahead. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Uh -huh. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Because John the Revelator is like, whoa, this woman is so powerful. Who is she? Who is she? Who is this woman that's so powerful? That's why it says, I wondered with great admiration. Now, watch this. Jump down to chapter 18, verse 24. Okay. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 24. Go ahead. And in her was found the blood of the prophet. You see that? In her, in this woman was found the blood of, pro of the prophets. Read. And of saints. Mm -hmm. And of all that were slain upon the earth. You see that? In her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. Who are the saints? Get that in Psalms 148 verse 14 real quick. Psalms 148 verse 4 says, see who the saints are. That this woman is drunk with. The woman is drunk with the blood of the saints. Psalms 148 verse 14. The book of Psalms. Chapter 148, verse 14. Come on. He also exalted the horn of his people, mm -hmm. the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise he the Lord. So the saints is the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, let's, let's play on. Police officials indicate that there has been some form of collusion between individuals within the ruling party and those in the criminal you see that? So now they are saying there's a connection between individuals within the ruling party. Who's the ruling party? ANC. And between the individuals in the ruling party and those in the criminal underworld. We, we just saw that the white man is responsible for smuggling these guns. But they are blaming the ANC for this. You can't make it up yet. In Cape Town, the murder rate has risen from 44 to 73 people per 100,000 in 10 years. It's now more than twice that of Johannesburg. One study found it was the 11th most murderous city in the world, not including places that are too chaotic. The 11th murderous city in the world. Oof. Count the bodies. The crisis in Cape Town is the result of a toxic mix of factors, the roots of which go back more than half a century. Violence in Cape Town also has particularly strong historical driving factors. The city is particularly divided socially and spatially. Yes, the city is divided both socially and spatially, meaning socially, meaning the way we deal with one another in terms of the civil law, spatially in terms of what, where we stay and how we stay. Because if you look at the Cape Flats, because we just saw, you see how congested that place is, is the same as where we stay in the Cassis, Elokshin, is the same thing. Who's responsible for actually putting us in the ghettos and we, stay, we, we live like rats? Hmm? Give me the book of Isaiah real quick. Ish. You know, this topic is very, I'm passionate about this thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah, okay? Give me Isaiah 5. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 8. Because when they took over, when they came here to conquer and colonize us, here's what they did. We what you got. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay mm -hmm. field to field, mm -hmm. till, there be no, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, woe unto them that join house to house and lay field to field till there be no place. Meaning what? They pushed us in the ghettos, the Cape Flats, the Cassis, Lokshini, Mamilodi, Soshangube, Harankua, Alex, Kalfontaini, Tembisa, wherever, wherever, wherever. The Bundus. Don't get me started on that one. 
it says that there be no place, meaning no place for us. Then it says that they may place, they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth, meaning they will live in the best places on earth. That's why you go into these suburbs where these white folks stay. They've got huge, big yards. And when you investigate, they didn't buy it. They didn't buy that, that, that land that they've got. They've got land that you can fit five houses, but it's just them. One house, maybe like uh, three bedrooms and so forth. The land is huge. That's what Isaiah is prophesying. He's prophesying about that thing. That's what you are seeing here in the Cape Flats. That's what you see in the, in the Cassis. Okay. In the 1960s, the apartheid regime forcibly removed mixed race people, known in South Africa as colored, from the inner that? city center. There was removed from the inner city. In the city, they removed them to the Cape Flats. They were forcibly removed from the inner city of Cape Town. They were pushed to the what? To what is known today as the Cape Flats. You understand? Give me Micah 2 real quick. You know what? Before you get there, before you get that in Micah, Give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me Proverbs. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter... Um, give me Proverbs 22 verse 28. I'm going to show you what happened here. Proverbs 22 verse 28. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28. Go ahead. Remove not the ancient landmark mm -hmm. which thy fathers have set. You see what the Bible is saying? This is the law. It says, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. What is the landmark? Talk about land. Don't mess up with the ancient landmark regarding allotment of land. Don't mess that up. That's what the Lord is telling you. But that's what they did during the time of the Bantu, the, um, you know, when they were, they, were, they were pushing Bantu stands, they were giving us Bantu education, and they divided us. You understand? When they were putting together these Bantu stands. That's the same thing they did in Cape Town. They pushed us in the, into the ghettos. They divided us socially. We were divided. So whenever we get conquered by these nations, they make sure to divide us socially so that what? We don't see each other as the same people and we don't like each other. So they make sure that we are divided even though we quote-unquote stay among each other. But we are still divided socially. You understand? Not only that, we're divided in terms of landmark. Because you go to the Cassis, right? You see the different, you see the classes are different. Even in the Cassis, you see in the Cassis where there's like nice houses, you look in somewhere else, there's a lot of cuckoos. You look at somewhere else, maybe there's like middle class and so forth. They even divide us. Even in the ghettos, they still divide us. That's what we read in here. They broke this law regarding ancient landmarks. Okay, and when they did it, give me Micah 2 now. Micah 2 verse 1. The book of Micah, chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Woe to them that devise iniquity mm -hmm. and work, when work evil upon their bed. Really? When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. You see what we're reading? We says they devise iniquity, meaning what? The white man and all his European allies, God says, they devise sin. They come up with sin. It says what? They work evil upon their bed. When you pray to the Lord, they pray to Satan. It says, when the morning is light, when the morning comes, they practice the evil they play, they planned the night before. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. And they covet fields. They covet fields. Meaning what? They broke the 10th commandment. They covered fields, meaning what? Landmarks, ancient landmarks that our forefathers set for their children, right? And take them by violence. How did they take these lands? They push us into the ghettos. And take them by violence. They took these lands by violence. Remember, with the sword, with the gun. They divide us socially and what? And specially. Go ahead. And houses, they take them away. They took our houses, they took our lands too. Go ahead. So they oppress a man and his house. Uh -huh. Even a man and his heritage. You see that? They oppress a man and his house because we are in our houses. They kick us out. They kick, they kick you out. Even a man and his heritage. They even take your heritage. What is that? Your land is your heritage. 
your boat, the resources that are sitting upon that land that you are sitting upon. You understand? Read verse 4. Come on. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. In that day shall one take up a parable against you. So the nations in verse 1 and 2, the white men, the Chinese men, the Arabs, he says they will take a parable against us. And that's what they did. Go ahead. And lament with a doubtful lamentation. Read. And say, we be utterly spoiled. And went, wait, hold on. Once they take a parable against us, we are going to say we be utterly spoiled because they spoiled us utterly. Go ahead. He have changed the, the portion of my people. Now they changed the portion of what? They changed the portion of Jacob. The land that was allotted to us, they took there. Okay, go ahead. How has he removed it from me? They removed the lands from us. Go ahead. How? This is how they did it. Read. Turning away, he has divided our fields. You see that thing? Turning away, he had divided our fields. Because what did they do? They robbed, they met us, they took our lands with guns blazing. And when they turn away to go back to their own lands, they make sure that we are divided. That's why when they leave, they make sure we're still divided. You understand? So that he can have peace of mind, even when he goes back to his own land, he still has a peace of mind knowing that he has divided us socially and spatially, meaning where we stay. So he gets to sleep nicely when in Europe. He gets to sleep nicely in Germany because he knows that they are divided. So I don't have to worry. And I'm going to set up coons to make sure that they remain and stay divided. Well, like when I come and rob them, you understand, of everything they've got. The forced removals saw them being dumped in their flats and having to establish new communities. Police rarely investigated the murders of people who weren't white. Their neglect allowed criminals to terrorize these black and colored townships. In these particular contexts, you saw gangs flourish. Conditions in many of these communities haven't changed that much. Today, the area still suffers deep-rooted socio-economic problems. In one precinct, Philippi East, 93% of households were victims of crime in 2016. You can never cluster so much people in such a small space together with no economic development, with no recreation, with no job creation. It's a recipe for self-destruction. I mean, the brother's right. It's a recipe for self-destruction. That's why we, there's so much gang violence because the, the, the root cause, obviously the root cause is what? Breaking of God's laws, the laws sending enemies against us, and guess what? Now we are self-destructive. We're destroying our own selves now because of that. And the nations, they are taking advantage of the fact that we are what? We have broken God's laws. So now they are able to infiltrate our communities and make the situation worse. I'm going to prove that. Give me the book of Zechariah, okay? I'm going to prove that thing. Zechariah chapter 1, read verse 14. The book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 14. Go ahead. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. He's going to tell you why. Go ahead. And I am very so displeased with the heathen that are at ease. You see that thing? He says, I am very so meaning I'm completely displeased by what? By the heathen that are at ease. Meaning the white men, the Chinese men, the Arabs, all these other nations, they are at ease. Meaning they are relaxed now. That's what it means. They are at ease. They are at ease because we are in slavery, we are confused, we are lost, we don't know who we are, we don't know what the hell is going on with our people. The people, Our people are now confused. They said the nations, that's when they are at ease, when we are in confusion. Go ahead. For I was a little, for I was but a little displeased. Uh -huh. They helped forward the affliction. You see that thing? They helped forward the affliction. Meaning what? They are fueling the fire because the nations know we are Israel. So in order for them to keep, in order for them to be at ease, we have to be in confusion. You see that? That's why there's so much gang violence because the more we kill each other, the more they are relaxed.
The more we, we, we hate each other, the more they are okay. But when we begin to return back to this Bible, we begin to love your neighbor as yourself. You apply the laws of God. Brother, grow a beard on your face. Put fringes on. Get married. Don't commit adultery. You understand? Build your nation. When we do that, we're no longer breaking the Sabbath. You understand? Our sisters are wearing long dresses. They put head wraps on. You understand? We have that love of neighbors. You understand? Guess what? That's what's going to make the nations, that's going to make the nation nervous. The nations are not nervous when we kill each other. The nation are not nervous when we toy toy. They are not nervous at all. In fact, that's what makes them to be at ease. But when we apply this book, not under white Jesus, no, under the biblical, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, that's when the nations are not going to be at ease. They are going to be sitting on the edge of their seat because they are scared, because we are waking up and we coming together, we are applying what this Bible says. That's where the power is. You understand? 40% of young South Africans are unemployed. President Cyril Ramaphosa calls it a national crisis. Apartheid is still happening in its own way. The white only sign has disappeared, but the violence, the negativity, the opportunities, nothing has come the way of this community. Hmm. You hear what the brother said? It says the white only signs have disappeared but apartheid is still alive and well because you see it in terms of economy, in terms of housing, education, health, everything is, is in shambles. You, you hear what he's saying? That's a heavy point that he just made. That's some heavy stuff right there. Gordon was in a gang from the age of 12. After spending almost a decade in prison, he left the gang seven years ago to become an interrupter for ceasefire. Today, he's returned to the township where he grew up. This is my world. This is where I come from. You can see there's no opportunities, no privileges, no nothing. The only survival key inside of here is be a gangster, become a drug dealer. At the age of 12 years old, they shot my one brother there in front, the other one they shot him inside. Right there by that, all right there is where I did my first murder. We grew up with a heart of stone, like we got nothing to lose. When he was a gangster, it was Gordon's job to recruit children to join his gang, known as the Mongrels. This is the only way to make the game continue, to recruit kids, you know. But since he started working for Ceasefire, he's focused on preventing children from getting involved in gang culture. You know, rolling with these little kids, just want to be an example to them, make them believe you don't need to be a gangster or a drug dealer or a drug addict. You can travel the world. I can be the example, you know, and show example to all the kids. You know, it will be amazing. Ceasefire has so far helped 700 gangsters like Gordon to leave their old life behind and become community activists. But there's only so much a small charity can do. Programs like ourselves and many others will make a dent, but that dent will soon, you know, disappear. Ceasefire is, is one of the tools for bringing down violence, and it can be particularly effective if it's linked to other sorts of interventions. The problem certainly in Cape Town is that there has been an absence of those sort of interventions. They've sort of been scattered across the city and so they aren't particularly effective. South African authorities are taking steps to tackle the crisis. In 2018, they set up a specialised anti-gang unit tasked with bringing down violent gang crime in the city. I want to give a very clear and stern warning to gangsters. Your days are... Did you notice something, right? What are they doing here? Right there. Anybody see that? Yes, sir. They are coming to make sure whatever solution is bringing is not going to be effective at all. But they want to make sure what type of solution is actually being implemented here in the Cape Flats. Number. Last year, with the death toll escalating, they even sent the army onto the streets of Cape Flats. Under Mr. Ramaphosa, the South African government is also trying to replace corrupt police and prosecutors with clean ones. Yet the murder rate continues to rise. 
bringing law and order to a place like Cape Flats will take mm. time. South Africa is continually creating perpetrators of violence, particularly young men who will use violence against each other or use violence in the intimate relationships against their wives, against their girlfriends, against their children. We need to do something very seriously about trying to prevent violence against children and work with families, particularly families that are at high risk of this violence happening. South Africa needs more jobs, better policing and a cultural shift among young men. Apartheid left a legacy of violence. It may take South Africa decades to overcome it. If you enjoyed this film and want to see more, then... Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. So now... Okay, all praises to the Most High God. The mission is a go. Okay, uh, give me Micah 2 verse 8. Micah 2 verse 8. Because this gang violence that is going on in our communities is because... We have left our first love, God's laws. You understand? That's why it's so easy for the it's so easy for young black men, young, young, young so-called so-called colored men to just gun each other down. You understand? But there's a lot of layers to it. But the layer I'm dealing with is the layers on the level that where we at, where we can be able to rectify it with the laws of God when we bring God's laws to our people. You understand? Watch this. Give me Micah 2 verse 8 because the reason why you see the high rise because Cape Town is called the, the mere capital of the world. That's not a good thing. Okay. Micah 2. Read verse 8 now. Watch this. The book of Micah, chapter 2 verse 8. Go ahead. Even of late, my purple is rising up as an enemy. You see that? It says, even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Because our people, we've become enemy to our own selves. We've become an enemy to our own people. You understand? We, that means what? We forgot who the real enemy is. Go ahead. Ye pull off the rope with the garment from them that pass by, securely mm -hmm. as men are versed from home. Now we are, you are at war with your own people. Because that's what's going on. That's what this gangsterism is about. You are at war with your own people and you are terrorizing them with guns, with violence, you understand? With killing them, with, with um, kidnapping their children and so forth. That's how they intimidate our, their own people. So now you are at war with your own people. Okay? Give me Judges 9, verse 23. Judges, chapter 9, verse 23. Read what you got. The book of Judges, chapter 9, verse 23. Read. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. Again, come on. The book of Judges, chapter 9, verse 23. Go ahead. Then, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. Now stop and the right men of... It says, then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. So this evil spirit, who's sending them? The Lord is doing it. Because there's evil down there. Because our people, our people is rebellious. They don't want to repent. They don't want to re return back to this book. They are trusting in guns and so forth. Politics, mm -hmm. ceasefire. Guess what? The Lord says, I'm going to send an evil spirit in the community. Go ahead. And the man of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Because the Lord sent an evil spirit. Go ahead. That the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jerub Jerubal might come. Mm -hmm. And their blood be laid upon Abimelech, thy bro their brother. You see that? And their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother. This goes into black on black crime. Go ahead. Which slew them. Mm -hmm. And upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. You see that? Read on. Watch this. Verse 25. And the men of Shechem set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountain. And they robbed all that came along that way by them. You see that? That's some heavy stuff. He says the men of Shechem set liars, meaning what? They set a trap. They set up men, you understand, to do what? To lay wait on the top of the mountains. And they robbed all that came along that way by them. 
saw robberies. Those things are happening because of what? Because there's a the Lord put this evil spirit in the community because we rejected his laws. He said, I'm going to use your own to oppress you. That's what the Lord is saying right there. He said, they set liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains and they robbed all that came along that way by them. Gang violence, robbery and murder, kidnappings. You understand? Get Isaiah 51 verse 20. Remember that word. He says, they set liars by them to rob, to murder, to steal, to rape, to terrorize. You understand? Men and women, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters. Isaiah 51 verse 20. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Come on. Thy sons have fainted. Mm -hmm. They lie at the head of all the three. Come on. As a white bull in a net. Mm -hmm. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The rebuke of thy God. You see what he's saying? He says, thy sons have fainted. They lie. They lie at the head of all the streets. That's what we read in Judges. He says, they set liars by them to rob all they that came by the way. That's what we're reading. Isaiah saying the same thing. You understand? And he's telling you the state of mind that they're in. They are saying they're as a wild bull in a net, meaning they are out of control. You understand? That's why they don't know how to resolve conflicts. They just gun each other down. You understand? They use the bullet to resolve conflicts. They resolve conflicts with violence. That's why they are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of their God. You see that? That's how God brings forth judgment. That's why there's so much terror and terrorism in the black community by our own young men that carry guns and put gun and put knives in their pockets. That's what we're reading. Give me, give me Luke 7, 31. Luke 7, verse 31. Okay, read them. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 31. Come on. And the Lord said, Where unto then shall I liken the men of this generation? Mm hmm and to what are they like? It says what the men of this generation is the men of that generation when Christ walked the earth. Is the men of this generation in these last days. Go ahead. They are like, they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Stop right there. Are the men of this generation, they are like kids sitting in the marketplace. Watch this. Give me Matthew. Give me Matthew 20 verse 3. He says, the men of this generation, they are like children sitting in the marketplace. Because children sitting in the marketplace, what do they do? Read that. Matthew 20, verse 3. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 3. Uh -huh. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So the third hour, that's 9 a.m. He says, he went about 9 a.m. and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So these, these, these men, these men, the men of this generation, the Lord is saying they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, meaning they like to be idle like children because children must be told what to do. They must, be, they must be kept busy. They must be given chores. So the Lord says the men of this generation, they like to be idle. You understand? Okay, jump down to verse five. Go ahead. Verse five. Again, he went out about the sixth hour and the mm -hmm. ninth hour and did likewise. Meaning what? About the sixth, the ninth hour, the sixth and ninth hour, he did the same. He saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So the key word is idle and they are in the marketplace. Because in the marketplace, I get if there's a market, you're supposed to be selling, you're supposed to be trading, you're supposed to be working in the marketplace. But when they are idle in the marketplace, you see that? Read on. Verse 6. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And about the 11th hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? You see what he's asking? The 11th hour is between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. You understand? He says he went into the, at the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them. Now he's talked to them. Why are you standing here idle? Why would your hand in your pocket? What are you doing? Okay. That's the question he's asking. Okay, go ahead. Verse 7. They say unto him, 
Mm -hmm. Because no man hath hired us. Stop right there. They say unto him, because no man hath hired us. Think about that. Imagine you are in the marketplace, right? But you are waiting to be asked if you want to work. You are because you are waiting. You are sitting idle and you are in the marketplace. I get in the marketplace, you're supposed to do what? You're supposed to look for a job. You're supposed to ask if they are hiring. But when they are sitting, it says, no man has hired us. Meaning they want the job to look for them instead of them looking for work. You see that? What's the reason behind it? Give me Ecclesiastes 10, verse 18. Because when they are sitting idle, guess what? They are doing evil. Okay? Ecclesiastes 10, verse 18. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 18. Mm -hmm. By much sloth slothfulness, the building decayeth. The building that goes into the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And through idleness of the hands, the, the house droppeth through. You see that? And to, is this, by much slothfulness, by much laziness, the building decayeth. Meaning the nation will not be built. And through idleness of the hands, the house drop it through. The house will collapse. Because there's too much idleness. There's because of what? There's a lot of slothfulness going on. Laziness going on. Making excuses going on. That's why. That's why that's going on right there. Go back to, um, go back to Luke 7. Verse 32 again. The book of Luke. Chapter 7, verse 32. Go ahead. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another, say and say. And doing what? And calling one to another. So now they are in the marketplace. They are idle. I get they are idle. They are waiting for a job. They are not looking for one. They are waiting for a job. It says, um, they are calling one to another, saying, go ahead. And saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. Read. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. So now they are talking amongst each other. We have piped unto you, ye have not wept. We have, um, he says, ye have, he says, ye have not, ye have not danced. We have mourned, ye have not wept. Meaning what? They are trying to entice those that are doing the same thing that they're doing. Meaning let's come together and rob this marketplace. They don't want to work. Because they say no man hath hired us, but they are not looking for work. So they are planning and consumed with evil. That's why now it's easy for them to just kill their own people as men adverse from war. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 1 verse 10. Because when it says we have piped unto you, you have not danced. We have mourned to you, you have not wept. This is the details of what it means. Give me Proverbs 1 verse 10. This is the details of what it means. Because Christ is quoting, is quoting King Solomon right here. Watch this. Proverbs 1 verse 10. We're going to read down. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1 verse 10. Uh -huh. My son, if sinners entice thee, uh -huh. consent thou not. You see that? If sinners entice thee, don't consent. We have piped unto you, ye have not danced. That's the key right there. Okay, come on. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Mm -hmm. Let us lack privily for the innocent without cause. Meaning they lay wait for blood. Remember, it says, it says what? They, they, are, they, are, they are coming together is, through blood, is for bloodshed, to kill their own. Blood touches blood. So they are what? It says, let us lay wait for blood. That's what it means. Which we have piped unto you. You have not danced. Because there are those that don't want to go and what and join them so what do they do they recruit by by force remember these gangs they recruit remember that brother was saying he says they recruit from a young age you grow up you become a gangster you have a heart of stone because you have nothing to lose you see that so that's what we're reading here we have piped unto you have not where you have not danced we want you to come and join us but you don't want so what do they do they force you to join the gang go ahead Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave. Mm -hmm. And whole as those that go down into the pit. So in, imagine, you swallow somebody up alive as the grave. That means you are killing them in a violent way. Imagine you burying somebody alive. 
think about that. Just picture that thing. Go ahead. We shall find all precious substance. Mm -hmm. We shall fill our houses with spoil. You see, verse 11 goes into murder. Verse 13 goes into stealing. So they murder, they steal. Go ahead. Cast in thy lot among us. Mm -hmm. Let us all have one purse. Meaning what? We gather all the things that we are stealing because we are stealing because the people that we, the people, the owners of these things, we have put them to death. Now it's easy for us to steal the stuff they've got. Go ahead. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Mm -hmm. Refrain thy foot from their path. So now that goes into honor your father and your mother to obey that law so that you don't find yourself in this situation. Read. For their feet run to evil mm. and make haste to, to shed blood. Meaning what? They are quick with the trigger. They are quick to put, to, to put you to death. Now, let me share my screen. I'm going to play this video now. Okay. Watch this. I'm almost done. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Okay. In Mamalodi, Pretoria, a string of a string of crimes in Mamalodi, Pretoria, including murder for hire, mob fees, extortion, and building hijacking, are reported to be linked to three gangs that rule through fear. Mm. Gangsterism has sprawled all over the township, with gangs Boko Haram, Farasai, and Al Qaeda accused of being the masterminds behind it all. ENCA senior reporter Viewe Mtila visited Mamalodi to see what's happening on the ground. So you've got three gangs in Mamalodi. The Farasai, the Al-Qaeda, and what's the other one? Um, Boko Haram. So these three gangs, these three gangs, they are basically terrorizing the community because this is Mamalodi East. They are terrorizing the community. So I'm, I'm bringing these names up because these are the places we are going to push the gospel. Understand? Don't get it twisted. Okay, Cape Flats, we're going down there. We're going to shut down the streets with the laws of God. Understand, you men? We have a work to do. Okay? In the recent week, we have received reports and concern of communities being terrorized by gang-related activities which are reported to be perpetuated by the so-called business forums named Boko Haram, Farasai, and the Al-Qaeda, particularly in Mamelodi and its surrounding areas. These are the gangs that strike fear among businesses and shop owners in Mamelodi, Pretoria. ENCA spoke to Mamelodi business owners who shared similar details of forced monthly extortion in exchange for protection. Fearing for their lives, they asked not to speak on camera. They are saying uh, uh, there's people who, who came to them every month and collect a, 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 a money of amount of 500 rand every month. And then so for protection fee. And then so if they've got problem, maybe somebody is hijacking them or doing something wrong to them. And then so those people who are collecting money to them, they are protecting them. The civic organization says most shops in Mamelodi are victim to extortion. Even street vendors aren't spared. There are gang of people that are collecting money from them. Uh, as we were told now by one of the vendors hey, to minute. say... We were here. When we were looking for a camp spot to teach, we came here. This area, this is Mamilori East. We went, to the, the, we went to the west when we went to teach. So next time, brothers, we come in right back here. There were some people that were here. They are known to them that they want them to make a data list of uh, their names so that they can start collecting 100 rand every week. Constant intimidation, vandalism or death are the consequences for refusing to pay. Something that bothers us more is the killing of young people uh, that are trying to advance the opportunity around the area of Tuan SAO particularly amongst Karala Soshanguven in Mamilodi, Prongo Spray. The South African Police Service says it's aware of the gangs. It's been identified that the gang-related activities in Gauteng province emerged as a phenomena around 2019. These gang-related criminal activities manifest itself in shootings, extortion, intimidation, killings, as well as organized yeah. crime. There's an established team in the area comprising of the following. It's, uh, Tactic, the TRT are tactical response teams 
our visible policing as well as our public order policing. Thus, uh, uh, responsible for conducting high visibility vehicle and foot patrols at identified hotspots, as well as stop and searching of vehicles suspected to be used by these identified groups. We are hard at work, especially in the Mamelodi area. The While cops say they have a grip on the situation, Mamelodi shop owners fear and trust extortion gangs more. Avi Wem Tila, Mamelodi, Pretoria. There are fears of increased tensions between South Africans and foreign. Okay, so now what I'm showing you is is the gang violence that is going on in Mamilodi, Harangua, Soshangube, Rongo Spray. Those places, they are actually terror. That's Mamilodi. Is they are terrorizing our people. They are terrorizing our people that are selling on the streets. You understand? They are terrorizing our people that are owning shops. They are extorting them. You understand? Give me that in First Timothy one verse nine. I'm going to show you they need the laws of God. They don't need the government. They need God's commandments to conduct themselves and build their communities. We've got work to do, brothers. Oh, my God, man. Read that. 1 Timothy 1, verse 9. Come on. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9. Read. Right. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, mm -hmm. but for the lawless and disobedient. Read. Right. For the ungodly and for sinners, uh -huh. for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for men slayers. That goes into gang violence. You understand? Lawless is as the law is made for the lawless, disobedient, disobey the law and their parents, for ungodly uh, and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of mothers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for men slayers that commit manslaughter. Go ahead. For warmongers. Uh -huh. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Read. Right. For men stealers. Those that I'll give down, those that those that kidnap, because that's what these gangs do. They kidnap, they rape. Okay, go ahead. For liars. Mm -hmm. For perjured persons. For perjured person meaning lie under oath. Read. Right? And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. You see that thing right there? So the Apostle Paul is teaching us that, listen, there are communities that are filled with violence, gang violence, robbery, murder, kidnapping. They need God's commandments. They don't need to vote. They don't need to march. They don't need to do it all. They don't need to, they don't need democracy. Mm -mm. They need God's laws. That's what we read in right here. That goes into in with Zechariah 4 and 6. Okay? Now, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the next video, but I wanna show you something. Go back to Proverbs one, okay? Because we're still dealing with that. Proverbs chapter one. Read verse. Proverbs chapter one, verse eighteen. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter one, verse eighteen. Come on. And they lay wait for their own blood. Mm -hmm. They lack privily for their own lives. You see that they lay wait for blood. For they lay wait for their own blood meaning for their own people. That's what we read in Micah 2 verse 8. Of late, my people has risen up as an enemy. We are, our people, they are at war with their own people. They've forgotten the enemy. That's why it's so easy for us to just hate one another and kill each other like it's nothing. And the nations sit there, they watch. They are at ease because why? We are against ourselves. It's time to return back so we can see each other as brother and sister, brother and brother, and love one another as the Lord loved us. You understand? And the only thing that is going to bring that together is the laws of God. Understand that? Watch this. Okay? I'm going to show you something that was going on. Okay? I'm going to play this video. Because they said they lay wait for their own blood. Meaning their own people. Okay? Watch this. I'm almost done. Mm. This is what's going on. In our, in our communities right now. I'm going to show you that as a people, we have forgotten who the enemy is. See that? They are singing about our brothers and sisters from Zimbabwe. Because he said, Operation Tutula, that's that operation by that boy called Nkanka something. You know, that boy is confused, he's young, don't know what he's doing. 
you understand, is push, is perpetrating violence against his own. He's afraid, he's scared to deal with the real enemy, which is the people that colonized us, that conquered us, that took our land and our resources, and they are here illegally. Your brother that comes from them, who, who, who the brother that comes from them, who actually, the white man before he came, there was no borders here. Now the borders are created by the same man that has divided us, that has robbed us collectively, but he's what? He's divided us. Now we see each other's enemies. You see, that boy. Just simple as he's simple as hell. Give me that in Proverbs 7 verse 7. He's a young man void of understanding. He has no understanding. He's just filled with rage, filled with emotions. He's emotional. We watch God. Proverbs 7 verse 7. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 7 verse 7. Read. And beheld among the simple ones. I descend among the youth. A young man void of understanding. You see that? He's a young man void of understanding. He don't know nothing. He don't know what he's doing. And now because our people, they don't know any better. They just follow along. They are not realizing or like, listen, this person look like me. That's my brother right there. The only thing that is going to bring the 12 tribes of Israel together is this Bible. Nothing else. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be a little bit of 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 a South Africans. Not illegal. Yes. So Sankela, Pakani, Gamnand, as funny sweet, as funny apule, as stone chitina. So Stella Uti. So so they are comforting themselves, or what they are doing is right. They are not causing violence and all of that. But you know what I've seen in our, our people in so in South Africa? They don't want to do this. They will not go to the street and sell apples and bananas. They won't do it. That's what we read in Luke 7 verse 31. When it says, they are sitting idle in the marketplace. Yeah. Tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Singan Bonilla. Until, until, until 2023. Yes. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. I thought they were not destroying. Look what they are doing. Are they not destroying the properties of their of, of, of our brothers from Zimbabwe? <laughs> this this is not different from the the gang violence the gangs 
you know, the killings of the gang members and so forth, terrorism in the community. These, they are doing the same thing to their own people. The same thing. It's no difference because they, they, they like to make you think or it is different. No, it's the same thing. That's a grain right there, right? That's a grain. Listen, you cannot make this stuff up. You can't make it up. Okay, so this looks like it's a repeat of the of the one that we was playing. But I want to show you something with the, what we just saw. Give me the book of Zephaniah 3 verse 10. I'm going to show you something. Man. Because you see, like, in a, reading is fundamental. Our people is void of understanding. And if you bring the Bible, they're not going to want to hear nothing. They are okay doing this, terrorizing their own people in the name of Tutula Operation. The hell is this? Give me Zephaniah 3 verse 10. Okay. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3 verse 10. Come on. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplier, even the daughter of my despair, shall bring mine offering. You see that? It says beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. That goes into Central Africa, Ethiopia as well, because Israel is there. You understand? Down Mozambique, Ghana, Guinea, uh, Gabon, Rwanda, South Africa, Namibia, and so forth. Israel is scattered all over the continent. You understand? So the Lord is letting you know where we are going to be scattered in these last days because we're coming from Jerusalem. Now read, read verse 12. I'm going to show you really the state of our people, wherever we are. We are, we are always on the run. That's what the so-called South African don't understand. You don't understand that. You understand? You are so proud calling yourself a direction and calling yourself after a name of a white man. I'm a South African. You don't even know what you're saying. Okay? Read verse 12. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. I will also live in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. You see that? I will live in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. That's what you are saying. You understand? Because we're poor. Wherever we're scattered, we are always at the bottom. We are impoverished. Read. Right? And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. You see that? They will trust in the name of the Lord because the prophets are going to go out and bring the scriptures out. Next verse. Read. The remnant of Israel shall not the do remnant iniquity. Of Israel is letting you know who are the dispersed. The remnant of Israel. You understand? The most High God is letting us know that, listen, we are going to be in the state of poverty, affliction, you understand, oppression. But now, is equal is not enough that the white man is oppressing us, the Chinese man is oppressing us, the, the, the Arabs they are oppressing our people. Now, no, it's not enough. We are oppressing our own people, we are oppressing each other. We forgot what the Lord did for us when we were delivered out of Egypt. We, now we're dealing with each other with rigor. You understand? Watch this. Give me second Esdras chapter 16, verse 19. Second Esdras in the Apocrypha, 16, verse 19. Read that. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 19. Come on. Amen. You know what? Have no Wait. Hold on. Wait. Get Matthew 24. Get Matthew 24, verse 12. Then we go to Second Ezra. I'll do it like this. Matthew 24, verse, verse 12. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12. Go ahead. And because iniquity shall abound, mm -hmm. the love of many shall wax cold. You see what Christ is telling you? It says, because iniquity shall abound, meaning sin. 
There isn't all you see all this confusion going on, these toy toys, this hatred, the all this all this terrorism that you see, whether it's by gangs or whether it's by so-called normal citizens terrorizing their own brothers and sisters from the same continent that they are on, is because of what sin, iniquity. Because we know how to do a, a we know how to play the magician. We know how to um, put the blame somewhere else. We don't want to really deal with our own issues, which is what? Repent, keep the laws of God so we can get delivered. Our people don't want to do that. And it's all over. In America, it's the same thing. You see the same thing in the US. You see the same thing in Europe. You see the same thing all over. We take our frustration somewhere else instead of dealing with the real issue, which is what? Repentance. Acknowledge that the reason why we are all at the bottom is because we broke God's laws. That's why. Our people don't want to take accountability for that thing. That's why it says, iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's what you are seeing here. Now give me second Ezra chapter 15, verse 19. Let me show you how, how the love of many will wax cold. Read that. The book of second Ezra chapter 15, verse 19. Come on. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. That's what you saw on the video. Come on. But shall destroy their houses with the sword. Uh -huh. and spoil their goods because of the lack Wait. of bread mm -hmm. and for great tribulation. For great tribulation. You see that? It says they will spoil their goods. That's what you just saw. They are burning their, prop, their, their possessions now. It says because of lack of bread, they are hungry because they are sitting idle in the marketplace. Okay? And for great tribulation, judgment from the most high God. That's why. Watch this. Give me Job 19, verse 15. Job chapter 19, verse 15. I'm going to show you something here. Because David prophesied about this thing. No, no, about our forefather Job. He prophesied about what you're seeing here. This xenophobia thing, Job prophesied about it. Watch this. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 19, verse 15. Come on. They that dwell in mine house and my maid can me for a stranger. Mm. I am an alien in their sight. You see that? Foreign. Now you become a foreigner to your own people. That's how low we have fallen as a nation. That's how low we have fallen as the 12 tribes of Israel. Start at verse 14. Read verse 14 and 15. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 19, verse 14. Mm -hmm. my, my king's folk have my faith. King's folk, my king's folk, meaning my family. My relatives have failed. Read. And my familiar friends have forgotten me. Meaning what? Our people have forgotten who their kinfolk is. They've forgotten who their family is. They've forgotten, the, they've forgotten their brothers and sisters. They've forgotten who the, any, the real enemy is. It's not your own brother. But Job is prophesying that your, your kinfolk will fail. Meaning in terms of what? They're not going to be able to identify with you. And my familiar friends have forgotten me. They've forgotten that the brothers and sisters from Zem, from the Congo, Nigeria, we all coming from Jerusalem. We ran from the Jerusalem in 70 AD when the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed. We started, we ran deeper into the continent. We started to hide among Hermetic tribes. We forgot. Ray, come on. They that dwell in my house mm. and my maids count me for a stranger. Come on. I am an alien in their sight. You see that? I am an alien in their sight. Give me Isaiah 69. Give me Psalm 69 verse 8. Not Isaiah. Psalm 69 verse 8. I'm going to show you this right here. Watch this. The book of Psalm, chapter 69 verse 8. Mm -hmm. I am become a stranger unto my brethren. You see that? I am become a stranger to my brethren. That's what you are seeing with this xenophobia going on. With this boy void of understanding acting like a soldier he's not a soldier you understand a soldier always stays on the mission what is the mission deliver your own people from oppression that's the only the, the only military that the black man is going to join is god's military understand that and in that military our job is to rescue our own people from oppression not fight against your own read again the book of Psalms, chapter 69, verse 8. Mm -hmm. I am become a stranger unto my brethren. 
brain and an alien unto my mother's children. That's what you are seeing. That's this xenophobia thing. This xenophobia is what? The, the, the nations have taught us to hate each other and they love it. You understand? So, but me, I've never seen any xenophobic, any xenophobic video, them going to confront the white men to go back to Europe. Them confronting the Chinese men to go back to China. I've never seen that. They always go to the brother from Zim, the brother from the Congo, the brother from Nigeria, so on and so forth. Because what? You have self-hatred. We've been conditioned to hate each other. So much so that we will never confront the real enemy that everybody knows. Nobody wants to do that. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 8. I am become a stranger unto my brethren mm. and an alien unto my mother's children. You see that thing? And an alien unto my mother's children. Give me Exodus 18, verse 3. Exodus chapter 18, verse 3. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 3. Go ahead. And the two sons, of which the name of the one was, was Geshom. Uh -huh. For he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. You see, this is Moses now. This is Moses' children. He says, because I've been an alien in a strange land. That's exactly what happened when he was in the land of Midian. You understand? And then we became strangers in the land of Egypt. We, that's not, that was not our homeland. We had to go home. Likewise, today, we are scattered all over the earth. And guess what? You treat your own brother as an enemy. You are at war with your own brother. That's some evil, that's some evil stuff. That's how low we have fallen as a nation of people. It's time to repent. It's time to return back to this Bible. You understand? Our people don't want to open this book because this book requires you to change. This book requires to be in order. This book requires to take responsibility and accountability for the things that you do. So you can be what? Responsible for your nation. These so-called political parties and all, they don't teach family. They don't teach, they don't teach marriage. They don't teach none of that. They just like to toy toy and nothing gets done. Give me that in Acts 19, verse 32. Because whenever they gather together, listen, everybody here, there, they have their own agenda. They've got their own gains that they think they're going to get out of the toy toy or the march. Watch this. Acts 19, verse 32. Read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 32. Read. Right? Some therefore cried one thing, mm -hmm. and some another. Come on. For the assembly was confused. So whenever you see these toy toys, hold on. Whenever you see the toy toys going on, that assembly is a confused assembly. Because they are not in the same spirit. They are not. Everybody believes something different. Okay, right? And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. You see that? Nobody knew why they was there, but they came together anyway. They were the same t-shirt, but they are not in the same mind. You understand? They are not in the same mind. They don't believe the same thing. Guess what? All of them believe that Jesus is white. I'm going to tell you right now. They all believe that Jesus is a white man. That's why it's so easy for them to hate their own brother. You understand? I'm going to end the class right there. Okay? Let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it and in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.